And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. Don't worry about that. Once again, a little bit of a video thing. It's fine. Oh, that was fun. fun. What? <laughs> what was fun? Nothing happened. We're, it was no, everything at all. going Good. according to plan. Everything is normal. Um, what's up, guys? We have uh, we have Eric on 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 the cast. Yeah, yeah. What's up? How's it going? Hey, How's it pretty going? good. We also have a Tom on the cast. I'm here. Oh, he's here. I'm and here. He is indeed here. And I'm Adam. We're on the we're on the thing. How's it going? Um, pretty well. I've been playing a, a whole lot of um Death Stranding recently, and um, oh, <laughs> I, I just gotta say, like the the gameplay is really top notch. But the thing I love the most about it. <laughs> Is like all the all the cool items that you can get that give you a bunch of energy. Tom, okay. Oh honest, my god. Honest answer. Did you buy every one of those just to do that gag? No, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Audio because listeners. Did, I think just... I might have appreciated it even more. <laughs> it's something Tom would do for, it's definitely something Tom would do. I absolutely would. You see, I've got the blue ones, and of course the green monster energy drinks are in the game. Now, Monster has not sponsored us, so if you drink a monster, you're going to uh, contribute to your deteriorating cardiovascular health and probably die of a heart attack. So uh, don't drink energy drinks, guys. Until they sponsor us. Like, yeah, not. until they sponsor and us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then they're Once great. Once they sponsor us, then it'll, be, it'll cure every disease known to man. Um, before the Arnold Palmer, uh, Palmer uh, Arnold 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 for no reason, I can't say Arnold that. Palmer is kind of a weird Arnold thing to Palmer. say. Like, I get that one. That one's a little bit of a. It's not. It's not a tongue twister, but I mean, it's it's a little in that direction. What was it last Arnold. night? Irish Irish wrist watch. Irish wrist watch. That's what hard to fuck? say. Say that one three times fast. Say it, Tom. Irish wrist watch. All right, now say it three times in okay. a row fast. Irish with... <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> there it is. I never would have That's thought a that weird. was a tongue twister. Yeah, I know. Thought my uh, trick well, would come in. But what I was saying is, like, before the Arnold, pa Arnold <laughs> Palmer... God damn it. Uh, blue <laughs> tap. Before, before the Irish wristwatch. I like blue more than green. Per flavor. I like blue more than green, but I like almost all of the other flavors more than both of those. Um, they have a uh, the, sunrise. They the call it. sunrise, like a, the orange sunrise. one. That's oh, my delicious. jam. That's my favorite one. I that thing that is so far. fucking good. Oh like, man, that actually got me away from the Arnold Palmers. Yes, because it's just so good. Also, you said yeah. that really well just then. I you you don't want to know good. how hard I thought about it. <laughs> you it's sixty five percent of his Arnold Palmer. I may have stopped driving for two seconds to get that out of my mouth. <laughs> Nah, nah. But hey, how, how you guys been this week? I've been okay. Um, I've been okay. I've been I've been playing video games today. Today I'm excited. Uh, I mean, it's kind of depressing in a way, but kind of exciting. Uh, there were new food options on DoorDash today, oh. which was really oh. wild because, like, opening the restaurants is not a thing that really should be happening right now. But yeah. I kind of think what we're gonna see is a bunch of food places start to open up, like. No, no indoor seating, carry out only sort of delivery places like, like uh, Little Caesars, for instance, right? You walk in, you grab a box, you leave. Um, and that's great because there are no good wing places in Seattle. And this I, is a wing place. There has to be a good wing place in there, Seattle. There there's there's no way there's not a good yeah, wing place is. in Seattle. B-Dubs is the best we have. There's no, no way that's there's true. There is there's no a way. bar by my house that we go or we used to go to every once in a while that had pretty good wings. They were expensive because they were charged by the pound and they called <laughs> six bone in wings a pound. Yeah. Come on. Like what the fuck kind of wings are you getting if six of them are a pound? So at least in my neck of the woods, there are no wing places like none. We don't even have a B-Dubs. We have some places that offer buffalo wings as a side, but they're not wing places. Oh, but those wings are good. Oh yeah, I would... yeah. I mean, they're they're good, but like, I'm I'm really looking for, and I realize I'm looking for something that just doesn't exist anymore. I want Quaker steak. Yeah, or Quaker steak. Yeah. I, I was gonna say, I'm like, I've never oh, been God. to a wing place that wasn't a franchise, like strictly wings. 
Um, I have, but once. Like they, you're right, they're rare. Because most time it's it's now you have some small chains like Buffalo Wings and Rings and Quaker, Ooh. but they're still chains. I love Quaker so much. Oh my I god, miss Quaker. You know that our Quaker closed, right? Yep. Fairborn, no more. Yep. Mm-hmm. They sold it. That was such. Did you guys ever do the uh, Quaker buffet? Hell yeah, I yeah. Did. Me and you did it. That was a staple. We went there after work See, one day no. or something. Yeah, that's right. When we were down that way. So I say down, but typically for us, up that, that could have been up, up that way. Yeah. Um, have um, did you guys ever get the burgers and stuff there? I can't remember what it was. It was like the va- uh, gas I valvoline burger. I couldn't go yeah. there and not get wings. I've Dude, I go to their burgers. It was pretty decent. I mean, it's not I, amazing. I get burgers from a lot of wing joints, like B Dubs. They're nacho burger. I really enjoyed that. I just don't like B Dubs. I think the vast majority of B Dubs food is, it's, eh. yeah, that's okay. It's it's better than average. I I food. really like their sauces, yeah. but the wings themselves are mediocre. I don't like their sauces. I've never found a sauce that I really oh, love from B Dubs. The, the mango it's, habanero, mango but it's, habanero. Oh, it's so good. It's either, I don't think I can handle it anymore though. Yeah, you can like to I mean, to me the sauces right. were either were either way way too hot and not enough flavor or good flavor but not hot enough. Oh, mango and habanero is your answer. Okay. Unless you, uh, unless you no, just don't like no. unless you just don't like the flavor, but it's really hot and it has a lot of flavor. It's got the sweetness to balance out the hotness, I think. Oh yeah, okay. if you're talking balance, yes, but it, it can pack some fucking. No, heat. it's hot. It's really hot, but. I'm good with hot as long as it's got the flavor to balance it out. Like, yeah, I, it, that's one it, of the reasons I I hate Tabasco. Like, it's just hot. There's no, no flavor. No, I I love Tabasco flavor. I I do not. It's very vinegary ish. Yeah, that's vinegary ish. Nah, nah, I like that. Nah. I like some bite, but then again, I'm a guy that drinks IPAs. Yeah. So I like my bite. Mmm, liquid pine trees. Yeah. Actually, this one I I already talked. I don't know if I showed you guys this for the video people it's um called unicorns or rainbows oh. and unicorns ipa nice <laughs> it's Ooh. um it's interesting it's actually pretty good um i've nice. got i've got some basil hodden basil hodden for us unsophisticated folk <laughs> what the fuck is that um it is this is actually it's excellent. we've had this um, uh yeah, this has been on the show before. Uh, oh, this is that a, one. Got it's a Hayes. dark rye whiskey. Um, so Kentucky rye whiskey mixed with port wine to get it like a little bit of extra sweetness, a little bit more body, and just, oh my God, I never thought that mixing wine and whiskey would work, but Jesus. <laughs> whiskey gets mixed with a lot of different flavors sometimes. It's amazing. I, I shouldn't say sometimes. That's just, like rye has got like that that bite to it where like bourbon is very much sweet sometimes overly sweet and rye doesn't have a lot of that but port tends to be super sweet so you mix them both together and you get like the subdued bite of a rye with um like really sweet bodied port if that makes any sense whatsoever i am i do not like rye I do not like rye rye wheats. I don't like rye whiskeys. I don't like rye. Like, like I don't like no rye, rye bread, bread unless you put it with corned beef, uh, oh, cor- sour sauerkraut, sauerkraut, and Russian. Oh, mm-hmm. that's so the only good. way rye bread is acceptable. Is that if you're making a badass fucking Reuben? I do like burgers on rye as long as they got Swiss. I like pastor- like pastrami on rye. I like. Uh, yeah, I've actually had rye toast. Like just straight up toasted was, bre- rye bread, mm. very good. Was it like a dark rye with a marble, or um, like that's the one know. I find the most egregious? Is a dark rye. Oh, like it seems to have the most bite, the most of I don't like you <laughs> to it. I think when you, you see, toast it, it gets a little less like that. I mean, it's still mm. got it, but it kind of mellows it out. This is weird to me though, because you like IPAs, you like things with bite, you like the Tabasco flavor, but you don't like rye. Like to me, all those are in the same category. No, uh, it's the same no, category. Also, it's the same category of bite and intensity, but not the same type of flavors. That's yes. true. Yes. But um, oh yeah, food wise, I want to get on this before I forget. Oh shit, I forgot to turn my lights on. I gotta adjust that at some point. But um, 
So smoked a pork loin, possibly the best thing of meat I've ever made in my life. So most of the time when I'm smoking, I have a temperature set and I end up noticing it's at temp at like 10 minutes after. And a smoker, that's not awful. You probably end up like 10 degrees above target that way though. Mm -hmm. I was right beside the smoker the second it hit the temperature I wanted. <laughs> that shit got pulled out. Rest five minutes. Juicy as shit. Pink pork. Oh, so good. Tender as nice. oh, Get out. It's just, oh, man. <laughs> I couldn't stop eating. I You're was full me from eating just pork. <laughs> <laughs> I did you, did, you, did you get the meat sweats? <laughs> what the fuck's meat sweats? You mean I had a good night? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no it was it was excellent i was very thrilled with that i love really really good well done pork and i've i've met people where they just don't like it for whatever reason like maybe they've never had it cooked properly uh what? because like pork badly done like when it's dry it, it's an awful awful experience and if you and it's easy it, to it's easy to dry out too oh yeah yeah it's really easy to dry out but if you've never had really well done pork chops, like next time you go to like not a chain restaurant, but something that's decent, um, like if they've got a pork chop on a menu, try it instead of the steak one night. Right. It's not going to give you the, the same type of bombastic meaty flavor that a steak would, but it can be really good in its own right. It's a nice middle ground between like a steak and a chicken breast. Yeah, exactly. It's got more flavor than a chicken breast, but it's not quite as, um, grainy as a steak if that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah but yeah I, I i really really dig pork um i i back when i was in columbus i was cooking that a fuck ton we, tate and i would get pork chops and do those up a lot mm -hmm. but tate like he was raw meat to the point where 145 <laughs> is your target for pork mm -hmm. i think he never poured a pork chop without it being 170 Oh, oh no, 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 you can't. He overcooked out. everything in fear of the uh, salmonella and E. coli kind of thing. No, nah, I mean, you can't I'll, do that. I'll overcook some chicken for sure, but yeah, pork I'm not as worried I, about. I, I, well, if I'm doing dark meat, I'm not afraid. If I'm doing chicken breast, dude, you got to pull that shit at 165 because that'll just like pork that dries out so quick. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's so awesome. this, <laughs> this wing place, speaking of dried out chicken. <laughs> oh god. Dun dun dun. That's a teaser, guys. Uh, so we call that in the business. Um <laughs> segue. That's but, show business, uh, baby. I got um a garlic parmesan sauce on my bone and wings, and it was it was okay. I really I want golden garlic. That's what I want. I want Quaker State golden garlic. No one's gonna do that. So it was fine. It was definitely garlicky. The Parmesan, I didn't really get. It was just super oily. Like, have you ever had, like, a, a wing sauce that's just fucking yeah. oily? Like, you feel like every after every single wing, you have to wash your hands? Yes. Yeah, Actually, I have a hot, I have like a hot sauce in my fridge about. like that, where it's okay. like a, there's just as much oil in it as there is vinegar, I think. And it tastes okay. awesome. It tastes really good, but it's, like, it's weird how oily it is. Like, I, I am totally totally down for having a messy wing night like mm -hmm. when you order wings you're not in it for clean knife and fork eating yeah um, exactly but this was another level entirely like on on the bottom of the tray there's like congealed solid oil <laughs> in the bottom it was, it was just too much you didn't eat that mm. with a knife and fork no nah, no nah, I, I probably should have but it, it wasn't fantastic uh, but Renee got just straight up boneless wings, which are adult chicken nuggets, and which are fine. Ordered, yeah, yeah, no, nothing wrong with a good boneless wing. For a long time, that's all I would order. I love because boneless wings because because it's so much easier to eat. Yeah, yeah, fork, but, bam, done. So, uh, I think it was I don't remember if it was Adam or Chris. One of them kept telling me like, dude, the bone in is so much better. And yeah. it really meat wise it just it tastes is. better yeah. yeah but like if you want something if you want something like with a little bit more crunch around it maybe a little bit more breading mm -hmm. then your boneless that's that's really your only option yeah um yeah so unfortunately this place a forgot the sauce 
Th- so that was dumb. Altogether? How do you forget the sauce on a fucking <laughs> buffalo wing? Otherwise, it's just a that. fucking chicken wing. Here's no your plain idea. wings, guys. Sauce it yourself, idiots. Comrade you Bunny calls out. Up? Yeah. Comrade Bunny calls out the place also didn't have just a plain barbecue, which is a goddamn crime against nature. Uh, um, well, well, okay. Wings. I, maybe acceptable if they had just like a plain buffalo. Uh, they did, Maybe. but, but I don't, I don't really count that because there are people, uh, in, in our lives that cannot spice. And no, sometimes no, I, I, I just want a plain old sweet up barbecue. Oh, it's bad for business. I'm not going to argue that, but I, <laughs> I can understand it though. Like not having something for the spice intolerant seems like you're really putting yourself in a corner. Yeah. But uh, it looks like they left the boneless wings in the fryer for probably twice the amount of time they're supposed to. They were literally black in some places. Ugh. Oh. Like, and when you what bit into happened? it, like the breading was crunchy enough that you actually had to like crunch through it, like you're biting into a goddamn apple or something. Like, oh no! It was it what? didn't it didn't flow. It didn't have any give to it. It was just like a big ass crispy cracker with really really dry awful overdone fried chicken in the middle of it that sounds um, like fucking cracklings dear lord <laughs> yeah it was it was bad um, okay so uh comrades pointing out something that you neglected to bring which is even stupider uh, they have barbecue dipping sauce just nothing they wouldn't toss them in barbecue sauce so this place <laughs> had the sauce they just refused to toss the fucking wings in it you yeah, know, they're not going to sit there and wing. open up little individual packets of barbecue sauce to dump into a bowl and <laughs> toss it through wings. Well, you know, that's implying that their barbecue for dipping was in packets. Yeah, you guys have any not... Taco Bell mild sauce back? Yeah, can you just like open up a bunch of those and then <laughs> toss our wings in it? Now, okay, when I'm when you're talking to a place with barbecue dipping sauce, I don't anticipate them having pre-sealed things. No, I see no. them <laughs> having <laughs> mass. Yeah, she's calling out. It's cups with lids, so they have big yeah. quantities of this shit. Yet somehow they can't put it in the same bowl that they put the buffalo sauce. Yeah. Mm. Now we're you know, we always give like when a place disappoints us, we usually give it two times just to. Yeah, you got to make sure it wasn't sure. an off night or like yeah that that employee that life. cooked it might have gotten fired you know later that night or something. Yeah. Yeah, like you know, shit happens. People have bad days. All right, we'll give it another shot. And actually, some of my favorite restaurants I absolutely hated initially, but going back a second time, it was amazing. Um. But uh, yeah, it was it was weird. Um, I I just didn't like it. The uh, the menu, like usually restaurants on DoorDash will have a menu that's you know decently long. It's got a lot of options. This place had probably under twenty items available, and it was all like variations on just here's a wing. What sauce do you want with it? Cool. Mm-hmm. These are the ones we have, which is fine. Well, I appreciate that about places that do. It I mean, well. look at uh. One of our favorite chicken places does that. Yeah. You Canes. want a chicken finger? Listen. Good. You want a chicken sandwich? Yeah. We'll put the fingers Listen. in a bun. We have four things. How many of them do you want? <laughs> but, you see, with, with Canes or, or with Taco Bell, with places with a relatively small menu, it, the stuff they do is usually yeah, it's gotta, pretty good. Yeah, like, if you be offer good. four things, you have to be really fucking good at those four things. Yeah. yeah. Yes. They were not. Which is why they're at Canes. They're like cooked to order and stuff. Yeah. Also, Tom, are you calling Taco Bell's menu small? Have you actually ever paid attention to it? Or do you? <laughs> yeah. Order there's the a same lot. Thing? There's a lot there. They're actually let getting me, rid of a bunch of rephrase. stuff. Did you see that? No. Uh-oh. So they're getting rid of the <laughs> quesarito, which is a oh, which is a let travesty. me let me Irk, you're gonna you're gonna get mad, Irk. They're getting rid of no. everything that has potatoes in it. No, that's <laughs> some of the best shit in the fucking menu. Yeah. yeah. So let me let me rephrase and talk about it. It's not that the menu is small, it's that the ingredients list is small. It's five ingredients in different formats. There's more than there's like sauces and stuff now. It's like seven. You're right. Dude, so they make a grilled cheese burrito. They have a now, seven layer they're, burrito, which they're so getting good. rid of, but that that's seven ingredients right there at least. Yeah, Scott just called out the same thing, getting rid of it. Um I like their five layer burrito. Beefy five layer is good. Beefy five layer, no sour cream is a very common order for me. Uh, I, I actually never like it with Taco cream. Bell. Cheesy like, Gordita never... Crunch is like S tier. Oh, the Cheesy Gordita Crunch is so Chalupa. Good. Chalupa is the best like standard item on that menu in my mind. I love the standard crunchy taco. 
lettuce, really? cheese, meat, crunch. That's all I, I need. I will never order a crunchy taco from yeah, Taco Bell. Same. I don't know if I have. <laughs> I don't like dislike them. I would just never get that. I would eat a 12, like the 12 taco party pack. I get one of those for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do that. But it's all soft tacos. No, yeah, I can't I do like soft, soft tacos. Taco. I need I need crunch. That's what I need in my life. Because the crunchy tacos, when I go to put my sauce in, they're already so soggy at the joint that it just falls apart. Yeah. Yeah, I, they're definitely better fresh, for sure. Ooh, I just got bumpy. Um, you, yeah. Taco Bell. And possibly some of the worst... Like, do you guys remember when they tried to do high-quality items? The oh, my God. Oh, it was the so like, fucking bad. No, they had... The burrito was delicious. I, but it was okay. like a $6 burrito. I tried the no bowl one, thing. The bowl was awful. No one goes to Taco Bell to spend six dollars on a single burrito. If you're but spending six good. bucks at Taco Bell, you're getting like a plate bigger than your head full of random shit thrown together. And you're satisfied. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like Taco Bell, you walk in with a twenty dollar bill, you're eating like a goddamn king. Yep. Okay, it's it's Scott, worse than it used to be, but Scott it's still has relatively a cheap. Um, I have got crunchy tacos in the sense of a Dorito taco. Crunch. I love the Doritos tacos, man. Like, holy shit. Okay, some some executive at Taco Bell. This is how I imagine it went down. Some executive at Taco Bell, like, lights up a big-ass bong, right? And he's like, what if we... He's eating Doritos. What if we made a taco out of this? And someone's like, what? Holy shit. And then, like... For a 420 special, they're just like, I don't know, man. It's tacos and a Dorito. What do you want? <laughs> but yeah, um, that would they did that with taco or Doritos, and they did it with Fritos, and they did it with flaming hot Fritos. My understanding mm. was that at one point, the only reason Frito Lay continued to make flaming hot Fritos was strictly for Taco Bell. <laughs> now they make flaming <laughs> hot everything. That's become yeah. a, a thing now. Yeah. They make flaming hot it's, of that like white cheddar smart food popcorn. It's the next fucking um damn I almost tied it. Bacon. It's gonna be the next bacon flavoring is flaming hot flavoring. <laughs> I mean I I'm like flaming hot, hot stuff, but eh? I I mean they're fine. Like I had the flaming hot um what was it initially? I've had was it Cheetos? The Cheetos? Cheetos, yeah. yeah. Then Those they, are pretty good. Then they started doing like funyuns or something and then yeah, they've done Funyuns. I haven't tried that yet. I love me some Funyuns. Uh, Funyuns. Well, anyone yeah. else have any uh, good um, little bit of food bits? Or should we move on to our uh, mm. week in gaming? I, I got Let's actual whiskey glasses. So hey, that's, that's nice. kind of nice. neat. So I've never I've never drank whiskey out of those. I've uh, done beer tastings out of those, though. Mm-hmm. Like where you yeah, there was a group of like six or seven people. Everyone had one of those and then everyone brought a bomber. Mm. So you had like a big 40 nice and then all good. Yeah. Hold on. What's Scott say? Wait, wait. They've always always used to give bags of Doritos with a meal and it was a nice combo and they combined. I missed early. Scott, Adam did not. Condados. Sorry. Yeah, no condados. Nope, it was a so, Domino's night. I did play a very small amount of um of Doth Stranding. Doth um, Stranding, Darth Stronging, Starth Stranding. U- the UPS system powered by Monster Energy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Amazon Prime um, in Iceland. I mean, America. <laughs> so I I keep finding like it's it's kind of neat when you lose. Uh, cargo, other players in their games can stumble upon it and complete uh-huh. the delivery for you. So you get partial credit. Uh-huh. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, but like every time I find it, I do the video game thing of, oh yeah, I got to grab it. Like I'm playing fucking Death Stranding like at Skyrim and I just, yeah. I have to there stop are, that. There are too many of those to do that. <laughs> I, I can't do it, man. I yeah. can't do it. Like, like what was a super easy chill mission ended up turning into like this massive issue because I've got a a fucking leaning tower of Pisa on my back that I'm carrying through a swamp. Like, what the fuck? Tom's going to be, his mission starts him in Ohio. He needs to get to Indiana. He ends up in fucking Florida picking up small yeah. shit everywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'll, I'll grab Did one it? if it's on the way to where I'm already going. 
Yeah. But I will not go out of my way for those. Or if I'm just yeah. full, I just won't bother. But I did a, I did a I did a side mission and it's literally a pizza delivery. <laughs> it's what? literally really? it's literally a pizza delivery. That's fantastic. <laughs> I was like, oh How? that that's the cargo. That's it. That's the thing. <laughs> That's yeah, did you did you put it like on your on your side pack because you can load no. stuff on your shoulders, right? No, because okay. if you let it tip right. over, that, that damages it. That's the like that's the point of it. That's funny. <laughs> that is a fantastic like did blend tip- of story and gameplay. <laughs> did they tip you? Um, no, they just did the same thing every literally every single other delivery does, and it's just like, oh look, it's here's my hologram. Thanks, looks good. Bye. I was expecting, oh, there was a delivery fee on the service. I thought that was your tip. Well, I mean, part of the delivery was, you know, get it there before the pizza gets cold. And it gives you 30 (laughs) minutes. It's like, wait a minute. (laughs) Hang on. (laughs) We're like up in the mountains at this point almost. Like, it has got to be some cold air up here. 30 minutes or your pizza's free. You got some. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> really mixing in the IRL components there. <laughs> no, but I love I love the not seriousness of a lot of the game. Like it juxtap it, it it the words. No, you the you're juxtaposition right. between the the campy tongue in cheek stuff with like how seriously it seems to take itself in other areas is really entertaining to me. I like, I mean, and I know that you, you could criticize it, I guess, in that way, but I think it's, I like it. It, it provides a lot of levity. It does because yeah. the the main story is kind of kind of bleak initially. Yeah, kind of. Uh, especially with your your main character being like, I don't I don't want to do this. Everyone's just yeah. like, but you got it. He's just like, you got to wanna. But you like, gotta. But but I don't wanna. We gotta rebuild America, and we're gonna but, say that every but, ten minutes for but, the rest of this but game. I don't, but I don't wanna. Can you <laughs> say he's? I'm nah, we'll go there. That's that's the whole story of Death Stranding. You gotta rebuild America, but I don't wanna. But you gotta. But you gotta. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. I I gotta say, like I I love the gameplay, but the story uh-huh. I'm not very impressed with the first. Stra- I'm sorry, care. second strange type game. I'm really impressed with the just style and theme and everything but the like the dialogue is really bad and all the it's like Mm. metaphor in your face (laughs) metaphor no subtlety whatsoever i i have (laughs) seen the face i have seen literal wrecking balls bring down 20-story apartment buildings with more subtlety than kojima has in death stranding all right so everything's connected to the the chiral network which is obviously the internet um you have this whole like system, which is obviously social media. Uh, guess what connects you to that internet? A literal yep. pair of handcuffs. Yep. Really? Yes. Yep. And that's that's how you communicate with people. It's like he literally wakes up, and puts his handcuffs he on himself, <laughs> and that that turns on like his instant messenger, and people are just like, "Sam, this is Die Hardman. You need to rebuild America." <laughs> Die so, hard. So. That's not even me embellishing anything. The man <laughs> literally <name>. die hard, man. <laughs> what? It's my I favorite character. Sarcastic. Die That's hard, man is name. my favorite Rockman. thing of all time. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> he wears this big ass skull mask. Like we, I've never seen the man's face. It's just a big ass metal skull. <sighs> die hard, man. That's his name. Okay. <laughs> So, oh, so yeah, the, the narrative itself is not, <laughs> like, it's, it's not necessarily good. It's also not, like, it's, 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 not, it's not bad to the point, point that it bothers me. Like, I'm no. still, I, I enjoy it, actually. It's campy. But I'm just it's not really expecting, campy. you know, Oscar nominee, <laughs> you know, level. So, so I got to this part, and I'm just going to kind of spoil part of it, because... I don't think anybody's really g- gonna care. Um, Probably not. <laughs> but, give about so, so you're, two so you're, seconds yeah. for someone to go right. out if they if want to. If you're really into Death Stranding and you want to make sure you don't get anything spoiled, even though it's not even that big of a deal and I'm not that far into it or whatever. So you've been working with this character since basically the beginning of the game. Um, 
and you're partnering up with her and you go to this new area and then there's this other guy you meet that's like i guess the antagonist uh part of like a terrorist group or whatever and then you're doing these deliveries and you're hearing from the other people that you're delivering to like hey you know this lady you're working with is like she partnered up with that terrorist guy like maybe she's not as you know somebody you need to be hanging out with or whatever so you confront her about it in this cutscene, and she's like okay i'll tell you everything and she basically just explains how you know they were in a bad situation and she met this dude and he helped her out and they built this thing together and then it he basically got enough control and then just like flipped the switch and was like, all right, I have a control of all this stuff now. Guess what? I was actually a terrorist the whole time. And you know, you were involved in this whole ploy and, and she tells our character that, and then it, you finally hear all the whole story. And at the end of it, she just says, so there you have it. Everything is true except for all the lies. And that's literally the <laughs> quote from the game. That is what she said at the end of that spiel. It's 100% accurate 5% of the time. So there you have it. Yes. Everything's true, except for all the lies. And at which point I went... <sighs> I kind of... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know what happened with Metal Gear. Because like Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and 3, like it was... It was always it was campy, great. right? Like, but yeah, the story was always nuts, but it made sense, kinda. Yeah. What's the chance but that this, this was some bad translation? I mean, Norman Reedus no. acted out the other part. He could have been like, "Yo, I'm pretty proficient with English. That kind of doesn't make sense." Like yeah, this these game, are English voice acted. So I mean, there's someone with the language. <laughs> that's yeah. saying. it's not Literally like the text entire the and like entire the, game is voice acted. Yeah, and the message that she like what she's saying when she says that makes sense. Like, yeah, you know, the main gist of what you heard is true, but because, you know, it's there's a lot more to it than what you heard. Ooh. But when you frame it literally that, that those two sentences together <laughs> there just are, doesn't... There are better ways to say that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. hey, well, kind of, but given the context yeah. that you're missing, then oh. no, not really. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's, okay, the kind that's of a language, way better way to say that. Yeah. That's the kind of language that would be in a B-tier Adult Swim show with Tim and Eric. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yes. Like that's what that kind of language or phrase instantly makes me go to. Mm -hmm. It's like that really bad 1 a.m. adult swim show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where so, it is campy as fuck. Mm -hmm. So I I could see why somebody would just not be into that at all. Like, yes, if you want yeah. to analyze how well it's written in the narrative and all of that stuff and, you know. I've given up. Yeah, like, I, I get it. <laughs> I, I you can to. criticize I'm... the story to death and the dialogue and the way it's presented and whatever. Even the gameplay, I mean, you could criticize that too. There's a lot to be, Ooh. you know, that could be improved upon or whatever. But, I mean, I, I, I still like the game a lot. I'm having a good time with it. I plan yeah. on getting into it probably around October will be by the time mm -hmm. I get to it. But I, I, I still really am looking forward to that I game. Think, yeah, I think you would like it. It seems yeah. like something that would be up your alley. It is going to be your perfect Sunday morning chill out game. Like, yeah. all right, well, we're here. <laughs> Let's do some Amazon Prime deliveries. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect blend of chill and uh, crap. Like, <laughs> you, you still got to work for it, but it's yeah. overall, it's kind of zen. Um, I, I still, I love the, the whole social aspect of it. I got to another area um, the last time I played and I, I did the long mission, which, all right, so I sent you that, that screenshot, Tom. So I'm Ooh. noticing this big mountain in the background of the game and it looked like a backdrop kind of thing. And I get to this other area and it turns out, oh, I'm kind of close to that mountain. Oh, I can see the base of it. I could totally go there. So I sent Tom this picture, like beautiful picture. I mean, it's just th the scenery is gorgeous. And I was like, hey, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to climb this bad boy at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, I get this miss later. Yeah. 12 minutes later, I, I, I didn't I'm not to the point where I have to climb the whole thing. But I got to this like weather station area, you know, that's kind of up the side a little bit. So I'm like, OK, yeah, this is definitely going to happen at some point. So it was definitely one of those. See those mountains? You can go there, you know, moment. But the social aspect is cool because I got to that part and I, I got that area on the, the network, which unlocks the other players stuff. So when you first get to an area, 
you don't you're not just automatically going to get all the structures you know super easy mode to your mission because everybody else has already played that part um until you get the main mission to the area and connect that area to your network you're not going to get any pl real player structures so i got that area cool yeah it's a perfect mm -hmm. way to balance it to where you still got to put some legwork in but then after a while you'll notice certain paths becoming easier as you go which is cool um so i got this place connected to the network and then there's like straight up roads built from one hub to another and i can really? build a vehicle and drive through the roads and like the center of the road will charge up any of my battery powered stuff like it's super cool there's cool. even like highway signs on the roads that show what towns are close by which is pretty sweet um, and that was all created by players yeah that is so fucking rad. Like it wasn't there. I connected everything to the network. I go back to the area later and there's a bunch of these roads and some of them are incomplete and there's these, uh, it's called an auto paver. So a player will make uh, the auto paver structure. Then that thing has to get enough supplies. And then once it finally gets the supplies, it'll build the road to a certain, you know, section of the road. So I, I found this one and I was like, supplies. man, it, yeah, everybody pitches in and you get this cool sense, even though you're not actually playing you know, or meeting any of these characters, you get this sense of community, which is cool. So I see one of these auto pavers, and you know what? I'm going to take some time out of my main mission because it would be nice if this road was a little longer. So I went and I, you know, gathered up all these supplies and I took it to the paver and it built the road and it felt good. It felt good to participate. You're a good Samaritan, F sir. Functioning member of society. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, 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 really where i think the game shines a lot that's that's a cool cool little thing and you can like yeah. request you can request structures from other you can even request just straight up supplies from other players and they might give it to you oh um, there's, so a like of, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff like that so not even uh for the common good just i need this for something yeah. i'm doing someone mm -hmm. help me out yeah. yeah nice and i'm sure that you're rewarded in game in some way but I think a lot of it, you're just, just like, you should feel good about doing this. You don't have the to do this. The only way I should would feel, feel rewarded is if I got Die Hardman's mask. <laughs> I mean, if he just handed me the skull plate and said, you are the Die Hardman now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and said like an equally cheesy voice line, then yeah, I'd be satisfied. Then. I mean, you I don't want so none of these fuzzy feelings. I want that yeah. mask. <laughs> But no, like, I, I kind of like that you might not be specifically rewarded for that, for some of that stuff. Like, mm. you should just feel good yeah. about it. It's, um, I saw this theory of how to judge if a person is a, a good person in society, and it's the shopping cart theory. So, yes. not returning, <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to mess it up, but basically, <laughs> not returning a shopping cart makes you a bad member of society. Because yes. Yes. there is no yes. <laughs> there is no actual punishment for not returning the shopping cart. You have nothing to gain from returning the shopping cart. But you know that you must return the shopping cart because it is your duty. <laughs> as well oh, as if you don't, no. people things may be damaged and other people may be inconvenienced if you don't. So there. in fact, not doing it negatively impacts others, but of no consequence to yourself. Yes. <laughs> there, there is a consequence for not returning the cart. And let me let me tell you about this guy. Oh, All right, so um, I'm outside of Safeway. This is this is like last year or two years ago, sometime. And dude is parked like on the side of Safeway with his uh, his Porsche SUV, right? Just just painting a picture. Not really. It's important that he has a Porsche SUV. Just letting you know what kind of man this is. Um, <laughs> he he puts. What are you his trying to say, Tom? <laughs> Trying to say Are something we stereotyping a little bit, but uh, <laughs> a little in, this bit. Case, in this case, kind of works. So, uh, this man finishes putting his groceries in the back and uh, gets in his driver's seat, like just literally puts the cart there, like next to the fucking dirt, like where there's a tree, like it's on the sidewalk for fuck's sake. And uh, guy just sits the cart there so it won't move and gets in and shuts his door and starts his car. And I walk up because I'm walking into Safeway and I just see this motherfucker literally leave a cart on the fucking sidewalk. Uh, I grab it, give him one of those sidelong glances and keep pushing forward. He rolls down the window. He's like, oh, no, I was I was going to get it. 
That, yeah, was, you were. I was, just, I was just, I was getting, I was, ch it was, I'm, I'm like God at that point. I'm just like, yeah. like, you only feel bad because yeah. you saw me see you do it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, don't worry, sir. I got it. <laughs> it's cool. So no. Okay. Fuck all those people. They are everything wrong with the world today. If you don't put your cart back, go fuck yourself. So I'm watching a show called Good Place. Just recently started it. And it is all based on morals <laughs> and about like what makes a good person, what makes a bad person. <laughs> and season two, they're starting to get into some moral ambiguities. Yeah, dude, it. You saying that just instantly took me back to those episodes. <laughs> like one of the people, one of the people, um, uh, essentially, I don't want to say too much, but effectively doing right just to get noticed isn't doing right. Ooh, yeah, exactly. Kind yeah. Of thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's now, a doing it doing right to spite somebody who just did wrong. Yeah. That that is where true heroes are born. For sure. I mean, I, but, I like being spiteful. But yeah, the shopping cart thing. And I'm not a very angry person. Like, I'm pretty chill. Like almost to a fault. Like that's probably one of the, my character flaws is that I don't get angry easily enough. But nothing makes me just want to curb stomp somebody more than either <laughs> Watching them not put their shopping cart back, or the people that throw trash out of their car window. Oh my like, god! I, I, fuck I, those fucking fuckers! I Jesus am, Christ! Yeah, I am so chill all the time, but as soon as I see that, I am instantly enraged. Dude, Dude people, I see someone freaking a cigarette butt. I want to like jam yeah, it down it's their like, fucking throat. Yeah, <laughs> that's for, yeah, that's a good way to put it. I like that. That's good. <laughs> that's about how I feel too. Yeah, you've. It's like, I, that's one thing I really care about. I really care about the outdoor <laughs> shit. Don't fuck with that. <laughs> like trash yeah. your own fucking house. Yeah. You can yeah. throw all your trash wherever you want inside your house. But. So, and especially I used to live in the country. As soon as you got outside of, I mean, Adam, you knew where I live. As soon as you got outside of town limits, it's where my house was. So before we mowed, we'd have to clean up our fucking ditches of trash that we can mow. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So disgusting. I live right by a, like pretty close to a bus stop so i get a lot of trash in my front lawn i have to pick up all the time yeah like cigarette packs and and all kinds of stuff uh, hey i don't i don't get people like up, i'm the kind of guy we're playing that I guy right now yeah we are i will throw my trash in my passenger seat floor yeah. and then when i get to my spot i pick it up yeah yeah the only time i ever throw anything out my windows if i'm like eating a granola bar mm -hmm. and you have all the crummies of the granola I'll dump those outside. Well, that's food. Like, it's yeah, fucking like, it's biodegradable. Eat. It's like, gonna get. <laughs> I it's think the eat. only. Did you say it's eat? That, it's eat. It's gonna get. Eaten. It's eat. Okay. <laughs> I think the only time I've done that that I can remember, like throwing something out the window, is I literally left the house eating a whole ass apple, <laughs> and I was holding the core. I was like, well, I could either like sit this in like a cup holder. Or I could just, like, nature is going to do its thing and return this apple to the ground. Just mm -hmm. eat into some trees. I don't I, I don't really I, see too much of a problem with that. But, like, if you're throwing no, McDonald's cups and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, don't don't throw fucking man-made fucking garbage. But if you want to, like, throw orange rinds out your window, all right, I'm not going to hate you for it. Uh, no. I, I still don't love it. I mean, I don't especially, love it. Especially stuff like that. Like, uh... <laughs> If it's like a breadcrumbs or shit like that, yeah, okay, a bird's going to fucking eat it, no problem. Bird might end up dying from it, though, because bird's going to be tracked to the road, and then... Oh, yeah. I mean, there's still yeah. negatives even to that. Mm -hmm. That's true. And yes, Comrade Bunny does point out that I do ask her to file the garbage um, at the filing cabinet of the passenger floor of the car. <laughs> nice. I like file that expression. this away. File this, woman! No, um... <laughs> So, uh, I can so just Dobby. see her throwing it. I can see her throwing it at your face. Right. <laughs> so, uh, so Dobby, if a goose tries to eat like an apple core fucking hole, that's evolution, man. That is natural that's, selection yep. at play. Yep. Um, actually, that a hey, I'm pretty fan. sure like most things that eat <laughs> apples eat the whole apple. Yeah. So <laughs> cores aren't really naturally left, yeah, but geese suck. It's a goose. Man. Let a goose yeah. fucking die. Goose, geese suck. They're the winged spawn of Satan, man. Yeah, they are. Fox geese. Geese are just bird wasps. <laughs> no, because wasps don't even make as much mess as a fucking goose. 
And and we wasps are usually like, hey, I'm gonna fuck you up because I'm evil, not like, hey, I'm gonna continue to just be a bitch because I know I can annoy you. <laughs> like a wasp is out for blood, a goose is out for inconvenience. Well, I, I don't know. know. Well, Those things get pretty you aggressive. Ever walked up, you ever walked up on a nest? You see how they smug me? Okay, all, right, all right, that's fair. You haven't that's seen fair. how smug they just walk around like parking lots and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's like just... a goose. A goose will front. A wasp doesn't have to. That's my <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I get it. I get it now. Wasps are just like I'm here to fuck you up. <laughs> Those are my two least favorite creatures on this planet, by the way. Not a fan. Wasps and geese. I hate wasps so much, dude. Wasps are fucking evil. I don't like them, but it's not something I would ever say I hate. Nah, nah. Mine is hate. Sheer hate. Uh, oh, well, Vidavi says ticks yeah. are my number one. Yeah, that's a yes. Oh, ticks, ticks, ticks. ticks suck too. And mosquitoes. Well, here's the worst now. thing. Anything that Once wants you... to suck my blood, not a big fan of that either. Nah. Personally, the thing not, is, once you see a tick, Ooh. every time you start to brush up against something, you start thinking, "Was that a tick? Was that yeah, a tick?" Yeah, yeah. Leeches. I'm happy with I've that never shot. had an experience with leeches, and I never want to. Oh, that's a good shot, Tom. I don't mind. Leeches. That had a lot of power to it. Leeches don't really, as far as I know, leeches don't carry disease, which is a big reason I don't like ticks. You have the Lyme disease issues. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't even go to the hospital. I just, you know, grab a bunch of leeches and stick them on my face. <laughs> I, I've had two leeches in my life. And I mean, it's, you don't feel them and then uh, they're gone or they're uh, off. I've never had one, but yeah, yeah maybe it that kind of gives me the heebie jeebies. I don't the go water, water I weigh tends to be super, super clean, so it's not common there, but I've had mm -hmm. two. Like two in 20 years, it's a pretty good rate. That's, yeah, at, mm. at, at the frequency in which you go fishing, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, but... Um, so we played some Death Straining this week. I've, what else did everybody get into? I've gotten into a couple new things. I'm going to start with the lighthearted one. I was going to ask you about that if um, you didn't bring it up. <laughs> and sorry, I just juked the shit out of someone. Wasn't me. I'm kind of impressed with that. Okay, um, so as everyone, I, or a lot of people know, Fall Guys, it's a new uh, game being published by developer. Uh, I call that out because they're absolutely Devolver. not developers. Published by Devolver. Devolver. What did I say? Developer? Developer. Yep. That's, yeah. I was trying to point out that they weren't the developer, and because of that, <laughs> I said the word developer. Anyway. That's fine. Um, it's a physics-based party mini game. So think like Humans Fall Flat or Gang Beast. Mm -hmm. But you don't have um, limb control. Like in Gang Beast and that, you have limb control there. You don't in this. So the objective is, think of it as like 1 versus 100. There are 60 guys. After each round, so many people get eliminated. So like the first race or whatever you're doing, the first 45 people to cross the line advance to the next round. Then like the next 32. And then all of a sudden there's a team-based thing where – the worst team gets eliminated. And then eventually you get down to one man left standing. So that's kind of the premise. Um, what the mini games tend to be. Um, there's a heavy emphasis on racing games right now. Some of them have built in catch up mechanics, which are nice slash furying. Mm -hmm. um, so think of one. I think it was American Gladiator. There was part of the um, obstacle course. So there's multiple doors. One of the doors didn't have a gladiator. The other two had gladiators behind them. You had to fight your way through. You went through the wrong door. This has like five doors. Three of them are real. Two of them are just walls. So when you jump into it, you're jumping into a wall. Then you have to go around and get to the um, actual hole in the wall. Mm -hmm. So the, whoever's there first is at this advantage because they're the one discovering the holes. Or there's one where you have to spin spinners around. So if you're the first one there, other people can fuck you up by spinning the opposite direction and stuff like mm. that. But so there's a lot of racing type variants, which is one thing I'm worried about. It seems to be very race centric right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people were worried that they're so samey. And yes, the races can be samey because the course is always the same. Like even these spinny things always spin in the same direction placed on the same spots. Hmm. Um, but there are some other fun variants. Like there's a tail chasing one where there's say 15 tails and you're split in between three teams. The, and what you do is you run, find someone with the tail and you grab the tail off of them. And now you have a tail and you're trying to dodge everyone that's trying to grab your tail. 
and you want to be the team with the most tails at the end. So you just spent how many hours chasing tail? <laughs> Not that many. No, um, that one actually didn't come up too much. <laughs> and then there's like stuff where like you're diving through rings. So there's a good bit of variance. Uh-huh. Um, I, saw, I saw one where it was a bunch of, there's like a bunch of platforms like above each other. And then each platform ah. was like segmented into um, like little hexagon squares. And then it's like as, drop as shot. you run, yeah, as you run across them, they'll uh, on a timer, they'll start to drop off whichever ones you actually mm-hmm. touched. So you have yes. to like run around and avoid other people. Uh, other people's paths and then that one try to be the last super one to fun. fall yeah super super fun but it tends to be a final one mm. so that's how you get your last man standing it's normally a last round one there's a couple other ones that are last round like um uh i always think uh fusion frenzy but like the towers where you have to jump duck jump duck jump duck mm-hmm. really quick to keep advancing up they have one of those that's a really fun final one where it makes you think also kind of like a wipeout. And that's how some of these racing courses are. They're definitely the obstacle courses where you're designed to fall. Mm-hmm. And then if you're on the bottom and you fall, it's definitely a slower route. So, I mean, it has potential. Right now, I don't think there's enough unique games to make it viable long-term. I, as of right now, it'd be a game that I would boot up once or twice a year. Okay, But this is also a closed beta right now. And new game modes are probably going to be easy to add now that they have the actual um, framework done. Mm-hmm. Or easier, I should say. Do they have uh, like expansions planned or anything? I don't know the development plans for this. I hope they're adding more. Same field and same premise. Um, so, Scott, the difference is people will play it differently. When you're running these races, there's no running them differently. There is an optimized course everyone tries to run. So, I mean, there with with Rocket League, it's the same field, but there's so much variance in what you're doing. And it's not just get from point A to point B. Yeah. So that's my concern. Now, the non-race ones, I think, are going to be fine. Because the non-race ones, just like Rocket League, you're going against other people and other people will always do different things. Like the tail chase, there's different strategies on how to run or how to duck, how to dive, how to dodge. Um, so, I mean, that will give variance. Um, other than that, though, I mean, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun post-cast kind of thing, but unless they add a lot more to it, it's going to be a couple times a year with the boys having some fun, and that's it. But, which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah, it's only a $20 no game. So they're not like charging $60 for something I think severely limited. I mean, to the point where I think as of right now, speedrunners might have a slight bit more replayability for me. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys are familiar with speedrunners. Uh, I bounced you play off it of it little, really quick. It. It's a fun game. I always played it with the four stack, which I think is the best way to play it. Yeah, yeah. I, I played it with randos, which wasn't fantastic. When you can actively curse at each other is definitely the way to play it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so I, I put a decent amount in that. It's pretty good. Also, another good note, the devs respond pretty quickly. Uh, last or Yesterday, I was discovered an exploit that could happen where there's a match they called uh, Jinx, which is like Infected or Cooties or whatever, where you have so many people that have a cloud around them. Their objective is to get everyone else to have that cloud around them and the team with the most people without that cloud around them wins. So what people found out you can do is jump on a ledge and hang. Mm-hmm. And it is insanely difficult to get a hold of someone who's hanging from a ledge. Oh, so it was reported time and time again to the devs. The devs this morning pushed out a patch to remove that. Well, that's cool. So it's, they react pretty. Quickly. Yeah. It's good to see devs that actually listen to the community and communicate with them mm-hmm. and, and all of that. Well, let me rephrase. They couldn't fix it, so they just removed the game variant from the rotation because they knew it wasn't mm-hmm. enjoyable. That's fine, too. I mean, they can always fix it Because fixing it was going to be probably a tweak to the physics. Yeah. Because that's yeah, yeah. definitely more of a physics thing, which isn't something you can yeah. just really yeah. nearly adjust. Yeah. All of a sudden, you have people floating in the middle of the I map. mean, you could. A lot of games will, uh, will do that where 
you know, something is broken. It's clearly an exploit with like an item or a certain map and they'll just blacklist whatever that thing is mm -hmm. from the multiplayer game modes until everything is good. Clash from Rainbow Six Siege comes to mind. Yep. Operators been Absolutely. disabled multiple times because of uh, exploits and stuff. But yeah, it's, it's a good game. Um, I'm looking forward to spending some more time with it. I don't think it's going to be a hundred hour sync, but it is a fun game. So I would suggest people pick it up whenever it becomes available. I think it's going to be a really good time. I think of it. Okay. I think a pretty good parallel possibly is going to be, um, oh my God, what's the Mario party on steam pummel party. Think of it kind of like that without the board game. It is straight up just mini games. Be the last man standing. Mm -hmm. That's what this has potential to become. Hmm. So like a uh, Mario party, pummel party kind of thing. Yeah. But I think that's enough of that. What about you guys? You guys getting anything else new? Beat Saber. Hey. Oh, wait, you hey. said new. <laughs> um, I've got a, a slight update. So, um, I was severely depressed because I went on score saber, which is like the world ranking leaderboard for beat saber. And it said I was, I was in place 20,000, um, which isn't great. Like there's a whole lot of people that play beat saber, but I think I'm a little better than, than 20,000th place. Um, so I, I dug into it a little bit and it turns out that only certain songs that have been whitelisted in the scoring system, which has to happen uh... manually count towards your rank. So everything I've been doing, like literally everything I've been doing, contribute no points at all to my score. Oh, so I am sucks. way better than 20K, uh, but I don't have, you know, a, a way to actually prove it. So, so you uh, need to start. So now, now you just need to start that. playing those songs. Yeah. 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 yeah which I, I don't know if I will, because all the stuff that's rated, it's like every single anime intro known to man and like <laughs> nothing, nothing I usually play. So, eh. I'm okay with just getting better and being on leaderboards for songs. That's Get fine. that number one cha cha. Oh, that's true. That's true. But I think it's because nobody plays that version of the cha cha slide anymore. But hey, I'm still number one in something. So, well, and I'm number one in "How Does a Wing Stop" by Jacob. <laughs> so, so number one out of how many? Three. Okay. Oh, three. That's more than yeah. I three. Yep. You bird and you smiggle. Mig. <laughs> uh, no there's a rando that actually played oh. it it's on the leaderboard i don't know why but yes there is a rando. they must have been like what is this <laughs> <laughs> yeah they they can't have enjoyed that i told bird adam to get a hold of you to make it a real thing and see if you could put some like vaporwave or something dubstep kind of bullshit behind it oh <laughs> that'd be fantastic so for those who don't know what what we're talking about <laughs> Uh, oh, there, yeah. there's, a, <laughs> there's a pretty good Twitch clip of um, uh, Jacob RL. He's on um, our Rocket League team. He's been a, a pro player for a long time. Um, he's got a clip of him just ranting about his experience going to Wingstop and how mm -hmm. they were out of wings at the Wingstop. Because <laughs> <laughs> so, he had to bang for free wings. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, they was, weren't open when they said they were going to be open. Yeah, and it's just it's just a big long rant, and it's really really it's hilarious. good. <laughs> it's fantastic. It, didn't it turn out that he was ranting about the wrong company at the end anyway? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like a yeah. wing zone. Wing zone, not actually a wing stop. Oh. oh my god, it was so good. Um. So yeah, uh, I have a little update because I've been trying to beat Saeed. That's been the the song has been kicking my ass for a couple months now. Um. I beat the part that I had always failed at, meaning that I have now completed individually every single part of that song. So hey. all it's going to take for me to actually finish the thing. Put it all together. Put it yeah, all together. I just need to be consistent. If I can be consistent in all the parts, I will beat that song. And that's that will put me in... Uh, the way we're estimating my score, I think we're looking at that'll put me at 23 in mm -hmm. the world for this particular track. Uh, which I think is pretty impressive because it's not exactly an easy song. Yeah, I love how I love how much the your process of learning Beat Saber songs translates exactly to just like learning actual Learn songs on, on instruments yeah. and stuff. Like it's the same <laughs> process. So Once again, the I'm amount of hours people start. Start. 
I was going to say that once again, the amount of hours people put into rhythm games often would translate to them being pretty good with any musical instrument they put that kind of time into. Why would I do that? <laughs> what involves me dancing? Well, then get really good at the marambas. Okay. Maracas. Maracas, not marambas. Maracas. Marambas. Yeah, big difference. Marimbas. Actually, I want to see someone dancing while playing that. That could be pretty cool. All right. So somebody's playing a marimba, but using maracas <laughs> instead of the mallets. Yes. That would sound awful. It might sound I'm into good. it. I don't know. Has anybody ever tried so, it? So, like, uh, yeah, Beat Saber. I've been doing, uh, I think I've done uh, 10 hours, 11 hours this week. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really keeping up with it as, uh, as my, my only form of exercise. And I got to say, it's still working. So, nice. That's I mean, awesome. Like, it, like an hour or two of hardcore cardio workout on doing anything, like you'd be cutting the fucking grass, is going to be really good for staying in shape regardless of, of what you're doing. Yeah, so it's not sure. like Beat Saber. It's this magical thing. It's literally just me getting off of my ass and moving for a little bit. Well, I mean, it can be a magical thing to you because it gets you active. Anything that gets you That's active and gives you exercise. I mean, it's all the same goal. It's how you get there. And different things work for different people. And you found something that works for you. And that's awesome. That's really good. So Dobby, Dobby called us something I was going to point out too. <laughs> what the fuck kind of yard are you mowing that it's hard cardio? Yeah, wait. <laughs> you have like a fucking on. jungle hey, you're mowing? If hey, you push that, if you have, a, if you have a, a push lawn mower and you push that thing with all of your might for one hour, that's a workout. Yeah. I don't know. If you're just hard, chilling, not, not hard, slowly walking along on your self-propelled or sitting on your lawnmower driving it, of course it's not cardio. Lawnmower if you take a pushing icing, lawnmower and just like go as fast as you can and pushing that thing maybe up some hills, mm. yeah, you you've never work speed out from run. That. You've never speed run. You don't the speed lawn. run your lawn. What are you doing? Come on, man. Imagine living in 2020 and not speed running your lawn. <laughs> You mean I want to get it looking nice? <laughs> Whatever. Especially after our fucking the grass shorter. Fucked it. Oh, fuck. I just totally ruined that. <laughs> so, um, quick side note. Anyone who ever thought a rock yard like they do in Arizona is ideal to grass? Get the fuck out of here. We have no. so much issues with our gravel right now because all the fucking weeds. No, just pave the whole thing. Make it a parking lot. I don't care. Agreed. I don't want to mow stupid lawn. Fuck lawns. Hey, let's put this That's, stuff on man. here that grows all the time so that you have to spend a bunch of time in the hot sun fixing it instead of just okay, making let, something not grow. Let's make this the middle ground. Do an AstroTurf. That's fine, no, too. That's, yeah, AstroTurf I don't like is turf. good. It's a hell of a lot better than concrete. I, I You know, I, I don't would know. rather have I'd, concrete than AstroTurf. That extra Mostly parking because... would be nice if you have, like, a party or something. <laughs> like, it... AstroTurf to me is like the worst of all options. It's like, hey, it's you're not eating a salad, but you're not having a hamburger. You're having a veggie burger. Like, nah, just give me one or the other, man. Like, stick stick to your lane. Don't give me this blended shit. But I don't like veggie burgers, so. Yeah, I've uh, seen some really good AstroTurf. What though. is like, this? I've seen Why some is this look hat? Really pretty. Dobby, if you have never needed an entire yard for parking, we got to throw you better parties. <laughs> uh, so what else have you guys been playing uh, um, I don't really have anything super interesting uh, just Rocket League and Escape from Tarkov some more Still going. I played around of Tarkov it was fun oh did you I was useless, Wait, did we play yeah yeah Oh, that's yeah, right. We yeah, had yeah, a, yeah. Did we play? You were was, useless. He was, didn't even no, it was, with it you. was one. I didn't it was do one match at like two a.m. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> GG, Zary. Thanks for uh, thanks for stopping in. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, thanks, man. dude. <clears throat> no, no, uh, I, you were so completely forgettable. He forgot you were in the. No, I'm, I joke. <laughs> exactly. I joke. No, don't joke. That is the reality. That's how I play Tarkov. <laughs> Tarkov's a hard game to <laughs> casually play. You need to yeah. at least play enough to know the map. Yeah. If you don't, it hurts. Like once you know the map, you can be casual. But not knowing the map is a death sentence unless you're playing with people. Mm -hmm. and even then it's a lot of fucking information yeah and i think if you don't play it often or you don't if you play it really really casually and you're not really too worried about like learning everything and grinding for specific things i think you like the gameplay the the moment to moment gameplay is still fun but 
like you you lose a lot of the stakes and there's yeah. less you know less objective i guess makes it a little less um i don't say engaging but maybe engaging is the right word it's a hard game to play casually though for sure yeah there's just so much to it um lifestyle game it is and i think that's why rob kind of put everything down and was playing that and i think that's why he's done so well with it like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's become his grinding game it's his game he's got like a thousand plus hours now he is the top as far as i'm concerned as far as i know he is probably the best player in our server oh by far, yeah, by far. not even close well i say that because there may be some guy that doesn't really participate much who's really good oh that's true yeah. but of of people who are even semi-active in our server he is hands down the best tarkov player mm-hmm. um so i have played a ton of different half-life games so i've decided to go through basically everything all over again because it's it's just time um so i beat black mesa and they completely redid the ending area like the ending area in the original half-life was um like it was it was kind of cool it was uh, definitely annoying it focused a whole lot on first person platforming which mm. is a bad idea not, and yeah. unless it's mirror's know, edge not yeah not a good idea it died in 1998 for a fucking reason um but they they changed it and made it this entirely new area which is really nice um the issue i had with it and this is gonna sound like a weird complaint the game itself is great but it almost felt too long like with with the addition of this last area and expanding what it was and what all you do there Mm -hmm. it added like quite literally another 25 to 30 percent of the runtime of the game just for this area um, whereas in the original game, it was kind of a footnote. It's like, okay, well, you'll spend like three hours here and then that'll be it. Then you'll, you'll never do this again because you've beaten the game. Um, but Black Mesa felt really, really long. If you're looking for like an old school story-based shooter with those kinds of design sensibilities and you want this game to be 40 to 60 hours long, like I want I want to say it was about 30, the amount I put in. But for a first-person shooter, that's that's an that's eternity. a long fucking campaign for an FPS. Yeah, because you look at most FPSs, you're like six to ten hours, right? Yeah, Half Life is yeah. like thirty. Um, so it wow. almost felt too long. Um, so I beat that. It was really, really fucking good. Highly recommend. Um, and I started Half Life Two, which holds up remarkably well. Um, Way, mean, you've been way better that, than Black Mesa. You've been playing that recent though, like before even because of the VR. Yeah, yeah, I'm going through it like on on flat screen right now. It's become my flat screen shooter. Um, so I'm not I'm not going through the the jank that that was VR because I did have to cut out a pretty significant portion of that game because they were vehicle sections, which <laughs> are just nauseating. I almost yeah. hate vehicle levels in games that aren't a racing game or something. No, yeah. Halo, something about Halo's them. vehicle levels are some of the best fucking levels they have. They nail the vehicle work. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, but... Half Life Two, like the vehicle segments, the the one with the car is really really good because it doesn't overstay its welcome. The airboat absolutely is way too fucking long, and this is an issue I've had with the game since launch, um, where that airboat section just doesn't fucking end. And it's fine, like it's fun, but. It's just that like there's there's nothing different with the game. You are airboating for like three hours or something. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, but yeah, That's I've been playing section, that. That airboat section is the section that all the speedrunners always skip, right? Yeah, they, they like, the big tips literally, across. yeah, literally just jump across that entire map. Um, I remember watching that with the devs and you're like, well, we put so much time into that. There it went. Yep. Uh, so yeah, Half-Life 2 is, is fun. Uh, I decided to get back into Half-Life Alex again, but only doing custom Big maps surprise. from the workshop. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, uh, Half-Life so Alex is I'm, becoming I'm, the new Dark Souls on the podcast. I was gonna say, yes. this is like circa 2018 
where uh, okay. all he talks about is Dark Souls. Dark Souls yep. and Half-Life Half -Life. Alex and Beat Saber. That's those yep. are the things. That's that's it. That's Just all like I play anymore. Only, we only play Rocket League and Tarkov. Yeah. With the that's not true. Other I thing. got something at the very end. Yeah, I know. I know. Frog Fractions three. We're announcing it right here on the show. Hell yeah. Uh, Get the math on. What else have you um, played? So the workshop maps for Alex are actually really good now. Um, there's a, a bunch of people who have actually spent a ton of time and collaborating with other map editors to make this thing work. Uh, I played the first part of the dam level from Goldeneye fucking 64 in VR last night. And really? it was excellent. Holy shit, it was so fucking good. Um, so that, you've got that campaign map is always stuck in my head. So I always remember starting off and sniping the fuckers by that tower before you get into the tunnel. Yep. Always. Yep, and you can absolutely do that here. Uh, so it's it's really good. The map is long, but not too long. It took me probably two hours to get through. Like, it's a, it's a map, right? It's not like a giant campaign or anything. But they've got Dam Part 1, and then Dam Part 2, and then the facility. You move from the dam to facility. Yes, they've rebuilt facility in Half-Life Alex. And Best from what map in any shooter in that era. Perfect Dark poached it eventually you know i'm i am going to i'm going to disagree with you because in that era of maps we still had dust too i will say no, second no, best no, map no of all time. no i'm sorry man i I'm, i don't care about the that is blasphemy you can't say anything is better than dust too like like facility can go up against blood gulch i can because i don't cool. suck gabe's dick i am allowed to say that <laughs> gabe didn't even make that trip. map it was made by randos in the modding community you get what that I'm saying. That's not a Valve thing. <laughs> yeah, fuck you. Anyway. So I'm saying Dust 2 at the top and Facility probably number two or number three, depending on how I feel about Blood Gulch that day. Dobby called out Complex. Yeah, Complex was cool, but I think it was a little too complex for its own good. Um, like Actually, Complex is the one I was thinking. I lied about Facility. Complex is... Uh... Okay, Complex is fucking rad, but I'm going to put Facility over Complex. Facility Temple was cool was with okay. Bond because of the fucking uh, bathroom part of it. Because Complex yeah. is the one where you keep the guy in the shitter, right? Oh, no. There we go. No? Yes. All right. No, no, no. no, no. Okay, no. Okay. Facility is where you kill the guy in the shitter. That's my mess. So, yeah, the Complex is the one that was uh, in Perfect Dark as the shooting for multiplayer. Um, I mean, it was in GoldenEye, too. They're the same fucking game. But anyway. Well, no, I, was saying, I was getting to the point, like, they literally took that map and put it into perfect dark. Yes, as well. yes, they did. Um, so yeah, there are people, and this this modding team actually has plans to recreate every single single player level from GoldenEye 64. I am incredibly excited. Uh, like they've got custom object objectives. You have to run in, press buttons on stuff. It is really, really fucking cool. Um, I played a little bit of a totally original map that actually rivals Valve quality as far as what they're putting in this game. It is really, really good. It's got good atmosphere. It's got a like, good loopback level design to it. It's got a bunch of custom objects which work properly. Um, I'm going to have to stream some of this stuff because it is really, really cool, especially the golden eye levels. So where I was worried a few weeks ago about the the workshop content for Half-Life Alex never really measuring up to uh, to the old Half-Life 2 modding scene. It's getting there. Slowly getting but there. surely, it's getting there. Nice. Uh, so, yeah, now I've got a... I've got probably 15 more hours of content to get through. And by the way, these maps are fucking difficult. The damn level, I died a whole lot. You have to play smart, and I was trying to rush through it. You can't. If I remember right, there wasn't a whole lot to that level. You go through the tunnel, there's a door you have to open, and you go through a couple towers, and then you bungee jump. Yeah, but in GoldenEye 64, you can walk up and be like, blah, 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 you're all dead. In Half-Life Alex, you can't just plop, 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 because you die way too not, quickly, not especially on higher difficulties. Not with that attitude, you can't. That's true. Maybe just, just, uh, just, just got to get Work good. on it. So, yeah, I had to take my time and sneak around, and it's it's fun going through like a stealthy secret James Bondy sort of sort of scenario in Half Life Alex. It makes it feel really different. It was nice. So, did they actually do the bungee jump part? 
Uh, well, that's that might be in part two. Oh, okay. I was ho- I was hoping they ended the level with you doing the bungee jump and then you would get sick. Yeah. Uh, so I probably won't get sick in Half Life Alex because when you fall, and this oh. is actually pretty annoying and really bugged me at the start. The fall speed is like a feather's descent. Like it, it feels like you're Mario holding the cape button in Mario World. It mm. is you literally just slowly float down and then you land. <laughs> so it's it's not going to be anything crazy. And Valve did that specifically so they wouldn't make people sick. T- Tom would be fine though because I literally watched him play a game where he was just bungee bunging everywhere. Yes, yeah, I I would be fine. But others yeah, others, but as not as, so much. as usual, Tom is not the typical user case. <laughs> no. Uh, no. Free falling in VR is nauseating. I need to see how many hours I have in Steam VR. I want to say it's 3,000 now. I, I had my counts off. I thought it was 1,600, but no, it's like 3,000. So well, yeah, I, know, I play a lot of VR. To be fair, a decent, or not a decent chunk, but some chunk of that is other people as well. Yeah, like maybe... 10 hours. I think I, me, myself, I, I guess I don't know how many people you've had to, over to do it, but I know I've played more than 10 hours just on your Steam. Because, <laughs> I mean, you you've think? had, you have, to, you have to remember, you've had it for like over four years. Yeah, that's true. Like, it's new tech still, but it's not as like shiny new anymore. No, no. Uh, maybe, maybe you can knock 100 hours off for all the stuff I've showed people over the yeah. years. That sounds probably about right. But that's a, it boils down to you still have a fuck ton of time. Yeah. I'm reading chat and missing shots. It's cool. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Scott uh, um, talking about that complex design being novel, but just not great for um, shooting lanes and such. I like facility because of the sight lines. Because of the way that the rooms are laid out, you get really long sight lines. And on, on the original map, you could see people Sorry. but couldn't kill them because of the bulletproof glass in some some sections. And he was talking facility, not complex. I misspoke. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm talking facility. I'm talking about what he's actually talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, so Yeah, that's really all I've been doing. I'm going to have to see what I can do about getting that at some point because I want to run some old school James Bond. Uh, you are going to fucking love those maps. They're really good. Fuck you, d Sorry, I had to say that. Anyway. Are there any other um, games y'all would like to get in on before I start talking? Uh, so I'd like to talk about hmm. how... The level design of Dark Souls influenced Half-Life Alex's level design. Um, okay. so. <laughs> Adam, fill his mic. <laughs> All right. All right. So I've started another new game that for the next week might kill off the rest of my games. Because I plan on, potentially I plan on streaming my entire playthrough. So I started The Last of Us Part Two finally. And got about a little over two hours in. And holy shit. That game is going to be brutal. Like there was a scene where I think I can safely say this. Someone was thrown to the ground. One of the zombie creatures. Hello, it's Last of Us. It's okay. And it was fucking curb stomped on the ground. The sound, the visual, the only word to describe it is visual oh what was that hmm? it, it was brutal it was just fucking ah oh, so great so i don't know what tom's issue was so far but i am loving this so far this game i can i have a sense it's going to be well i'm not even going to say that i think i know where the game is going to go for at least the next 20 hours or 15 hours i expect something change at the very end no it's the word literally just escaped me hugh uh, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I've been saying visceral. There we go. Visceral. Man, why did it take me so long? It is visceral. What happens with that curb stomp? Um, curb stomp, stomp. The craft, as, as Tom already said, I don't want to rehash too much. I mean, the crafting mechanics still there and everything. The game's pretty. Um, where the scenery is beautiful, I feel some of the in-game, in-engine character models, they're okay. I don't think the character models, at least whenever you start getting like close-ups, they're not 
like the rest of the scenery. The rest of the scenery just looks great. And then you see that I was like, ah, oh, it's okay. Which surprises me a little bit, but it's also end of generation. So I, I kind of get it. Um, but yeah, this, this game's good. I'm going to run through this. I'm not going to stop. It plays just like the first. They have a lot of the mechanics of the first. So yeah. I, I have to ask you, Eric, has it made you feel anything emotionally yet? No. Eric doesn't have emotions. We covered this in this <laughs> war of mine. I'm just double checking. He saw that intro and he's just like, wow, that's really good graphics, man. No, I'm mean, not going to think about the context or what's going on. Just, wow, that's that's really pretty. No, I mean, the scenery is, I, I think that the character models could be improved, but there's nothing that's made me feel yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, it uh, sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Having watched you play certain parts <laughs> and you felt nothing. I mean, it's like, eh, I didn't want to do the podcast because I watched you play it. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, you have no I'm attachment most, whatsoever? I'm mostly like, oh, that kind of sucks. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. You have no empathy whatsoever. You're oh, right. I, <laughs> I expected it. Oh. Literally, there was something. I can't get into it here, you motherfuckers. I know. You but can't get into it. I know. We already said too much. There was a conversation that went around the first trailer. And that's all I'm going to say. So, I wasn't blindsided by it. I had. You don't have 20... to be blindsided by something no, to happen for it to affect you. I mean... Uh, give me all the time in the world to get ready for game. something if it's something i uh trying to say it about was, giving anything away just the, whatever it was not a fun cutscene. eric's gonna spend all. too much time analyzing everything and he's not gonna feel any of it and that's that makes me sad because no. that was the part i like the most about the game is how it Ooh. made me feel no, the first game had some feels. I, I I'm not saying and I don't want to say that I liked but, the way it made me feel, but I mean, like, <laughs> that's what I appreciated about the game because it, it's it very made me very sad. It's eliciting emotion. Yeah, but it's, it's extremely what, good. Are you? Am I supposed to feel an emotion? I'm not going to say which. An emotion because of what happened if I anticipated it happening anyway? Yes. yes. That scene was specifically built if I to know elicit s- emotion. Uh, yeah. If I know, you know something's I mean, going to happen that's terrible, it's still a terrible thing happening, and I'm still going to feel the terrible thing whether I know it's happening or but, not. But, it no, would be more effective I, blindsided, sure. I, I think we're giving Urk a, a little, little bit too much hell here because you and I haven't been through the experience of brutally murdering an old couple over nothing <laughs> in this war of mine for funsies. <laughs> like, if we had lived the life that Urk had... I'm sure we would be emotionless robots too. Listen, I can feel emotion <laughs> when it comes to game stuff. I really can. I just, that part there. Yeah. Okay. Do I think oh, that kind of sucks for her? Sure. But I myself didn't feel <laughs> any does. emotion. Kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. It's, okay. Just slightly inconvenient. It's cool. <laughs> it sucks. Oh. Like, ah, uh, I just buttered my toast and dropped oh, it on the floor. Yeah, that's, that's yeah that kind of sucks. Oh, man. No, that what really sucks, dude. Like, man. If you all that time prepping food and then it's just gone, that's awful. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, I'm making that point. Tongue in cheek. Oh, Fuck you guys. We have to talk about something else, please. Yeah. That's Should we roll that. on to some news? Uh, uh, yes. Yes, or else the world's going to figure out you actually are a sociopath. <laughs> I'm not a fucking so. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's not a sociopath. He's a rock. Because it's lost a leaf. Fuck you guys. Yeah, that's the equivalent for sure. D lads, you cannot tell me you've never been attached to a video game character. I've seen you play TF2. Oh, you God. have feelings it's... for heavy. We all do. Now he has feelings for his medic, only because when the medic dies, he dies. <sighs> it's the only reason he has an emotional connection. Yep. <laughs> Dobby calling out his diva mouse pad, fucking calling him out. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's get into some news because I mean, yeah. there's not much I could say to defend myself right now. <laughs> yeah, without we've already stuff. said too many things that are a little yeah, too revealing. Have. Especially, the toast, sorry man. everybody. 
I don't think there was anything really revealing there. Yep, there was. Yeah. You think so? Not yeah. specifics revealing, but enough that you could, it would steer somebody in assuming something. You would know that Ellie proven, makes right. toast at yes. some point in the game. I actually believe and then it would Ellie, steer you, and then Ellie it would steer got, you somewhere else. No, I, no, not Do you remember she, my conversation when I was playing pretty early? Yeah, I it think could, it would steer people. I don't know. I didn't feel that the first time. I, I, was I absolutely did. Really? Like, I, I, I swore that was going to happen. Hmm. But either way. Um, so, yeah. And also, what kind of helped, I kind of foresaw that happening. I, I won't go. I won't go into it. Damn it. I just want to fucking say stuff. Um, <laughs> anyway, news. Get me out of here, this hole. Um, but remember, we're only reporting news from, like, seventh party weird conservative like blasting shitty twitter accounts we're not doing any of this primary source bullshit as dobby calls out <laughs> no, also what he's calling out is the irony of the fact that we are the non-primary source we are yes yeah which is why we have show so note links <laughs> and that's why they had links in their tweet anyway yeah. uh, mm. it's the same exact thing anyway <laughs> so um we have locked our rocket league team so yesterday hey. by 10 a.m. Pacific time was lock for any team not qualified directly into RLCS from last season. So our team is now locked. And if you've been following what's been going on the last week or two, um, there's been some shakeups. So Lion has left the team and he's uh, with Omelette. They had a badass tournament. Uh, he stuck with them. So good luck to him. Love the dude. No bad blood, as we've talked about. But... Our roster is going to fucking destroy some squads. So we've got the combination of Wonder, Jacob, and Ty. Ty, not, not Tyler. Ty, not Tyler, to specify. Um, because we have a Ty in our community. Love you, Ty. Not that Ty. Anyway. Different Ty. That guy's a beast so, of Rocket League, too, though. Yes, he is. So that is locked. Um, as of today, RLCS teams are all locked. So... As of right now, all teams that are competing in RL RLCS Season X are locked. RLCS wow, X is that. a bit of a mouthful. Ooh. Yes, it is. But I like what they're doing with it. So it's going to be fun. It's a longer, drawn-out thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really, really good. Yep. Teams are locked, Prototrix. He, he's mocking the fact I said that like three times. Anyway. Teams are locked. Um, by the just way, so you're in aware, case... the teams... The teams are locked. If there is something that is locked, it is for sure the teams. And some doors. If I had to lock anything down right now, it would be teams for RLCS. Yes. I fucking hate you guys. Um, so, other news. We had a Halo Infinite gameplay trailer. Eight fucking minutes of it. Okay, yep. so I watched all of this, and I'm not a big Halo guy. So I watched it, and I was like, looks cool. Um, I noticed the soundtrack theme, and I liked what they did with that because, the, um, like, musically, they took that theme and used it in a variety of ways and, like, changed the key of it for a certain part. It kind of gave me chills because the chord progression was so good. <laughs> but um, I, I love the music in the Halo games. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. so I, noticed, really I noticed that about the trailer. Um, but I think a lot of the trailer went over my head just because I haven't played Halo in such a long time and I'm not super attached to what's happening in general. So I kind of need you, Eric, the fan, the the Halo fan guy, to kind of show me what's so exciting about the trailer, I guess. So um, I'll call out at first some things that seem to be potentially new to the series. Uh, one was glaringly obvious. and they p textures. Fuck you. Um, they've <laughs> called this out as a big thing. You can explore the ring. You, it's open world. That open world map looked pretty cool. I like that you set your own fucking waypoints instead of having mm. the game do it for you. Massive world. That's really fucking cool. Um, another thing that was really fucking interesting, when it came to the brutes that got dropped down in those drop pods, on the second one, you notice he shoots him in the legs. After so many shots in the legs, he actually stumbles out of his charge. So I'm wondering if there's going to start being some mechanic based on where you're shooting people on what they do. Like if you shoot a jackal in the arm, they drop the shield maybe, and maybe some other mechanics like that to come, which would be kind hmm. of fun. Okay. And then As the a little other... Combat. Yeah. 
The other really big thing I think everyone noticed, even if you're not a big Halo guy, there's a fucking grappling hook. Like, Master Chief is grappling around on this shit. And it's pretty cool. Like, he's grappling past things and, like, meleeing when he gets there. So that was so fucking cool to see. He grapples. This was interesting because it allows you to weaponize him. He grapples a fusion coil and then throws it. Hmm. Which was really, really fun to see. Um, so some non-new features. Well, one of them kind of is. Looks like they either reworked the DMR or they introduced a automatic form of the DMR. It's not like an assault rifle quick speed. But it was like, do, do, do. Single, really, or pretty fast succession, highly accurate shots. That looked really fucking good. And then um, the mauler got reworked. That mauler they showed in that clip looked really fucking rad. The carbine, or carbine looks like it might be fully automatic or it's a needle rifle variant that's going to be kind of cool. So there were some flashes of guns that looked pretty awesome. No, no, Scott, it wasn't semi-automatic. If you watch that trailer, you'll see what I'm saying. That was not a semi-automatic gun, the way that was being shot. It was continuous cadence at the same speed. It was fully automatic. It just wasn't quick. Um. Anyway, uh, he calls out something that is something I thought about. With the grappling hook and being open world, I wonder how locomotion becomes. Because previously in Halo, crouch jumping was the way to cheese maps. Now that you have a grappling hook, what kind of barriers are they going to try to put in front of you? Interesting. So map traversal might be more of the gameplay focus than it was. Huh? You're saying map traversal would be more of a gameplay focus than what it was before? Um, or... It's going to be different. Um, and you're definitely going to have more verticality to levels. I'm mm-hmm. anticipating a lot more verticality, which is going to be fun. There was already a decent amount but a lot of times it leveraged the player to be able to effectively get there. They had to know how to crouch jump and use that kind of a mechanic to get there. This is straight up grapple your ass where you want to get, or potentially. Um, so, And one other big takeaway I saw was usable equipment. So in Halo 3, you had things like drop shields and shit that you would throw that you'd pick up on the map and use like a grenade. And a shield would pop up or a decoy would run out or something shit like that. Halo 4, in I believe 5 was to a degree, it was armor effects that you permanently had. People did not like that. Actually, that was Reach that started that. This seems to bring back the use of ability items. So that's kind of a fun throwback to like Halo 3 era. And because a lot of people didn't like armor abilities, you can cheese some of them pretty heavily. Yeah, you can. So open world is interesting to me for Halo. I think that's, um, there's there's a lot of potential bad that could happen. There's also a lot of potential good. What they've shown so far does look like it's going to work. Um, well, let's talk about that for just a second. This isn't the first time they've done open world. That's true. That's true. I mean, granted, it wasn't like full scale, mm-hmm. but they but dabbled o- in it and it went yeah. well. Yeah, ODST did some really interesting things. Um, I Open world worries me for a lot of reasons, um, because not every game is built for that, and Halo has always been a very linear shooter as far as the cam- cam- uh, campaigns go, with the exception of ODST, um, yes. which is still kind of linear. It just gives you four things that you can do in any order. Um, it's... It's interesting. One of the things that has to happen, though, with an open world game is that graphics and textures and animations and all that stuff has to be scaled back. Because when you're building a linear series of levels, you know, okay, on this level of this portion in the campaign, we have this many resources to get dedicate to these types of things. Texture work, animations, entities, that sort of thing, right? You have literally a a list of resources that you are able to use and exhaust in open world because stuff changes so rapidly and because you have to stream in all those things you're pretty locked down as far as your requirements go you have a a lower threshold of what's acceptable Uh, that's also part of the deal with um what they've been touting with the xbox series x is some of the streaming capabilities that they could do for games then why the fuck 
did the fucking brute look like a goddamn PS2 era generic monkey bad guy? Because right. that screen that that screen you're talking about that screenshot that looks really, no, really bad. Uh, no, I I watched the thing like it wasn't a screenshot. I the end shot where the dude is is like yelling at the camera looks PS2 I era. Looked, I thought that it's, looked fine. No, it and was also bad. that that has nothing to do with the engine. That is straight up CGI. No, like, that's, that's not. That's, that was. That's a, that was cutscene. If that, if that was if that was CGI cutscene, Microsoft needs to literally fire everyone who took part in that. that literally was everyone. A, that was absolutely a cutscene. That was also, a lot worse this, looking than The Last of Us Two. I mean, but that's. I'm not going to compare anything but to The Last of Us Two. It's like, was, yeah, my fifth grader's art project doesn't look like the Sistine well, I mean, Chapel. Eric so. was saying that a lot of the character models and face stuff in The Last of Us Two didn't look that great, but I, no, I, I think that brute yelling at the end looked better than the in-game models in The Last of Us Two. That's insane to mm. me. I completely, one hundred percent, disagree with that. I could not I thought, disagree with anything harder. I That's didn't like think models. that brute at the that brute at the end. I didn't think looked bad at all. I thought and he looked even, perfectly fine. Even the brute in the games didn't look good. Like it, it looked. The textures looked distinctly low resolution to me. Like the the assault rifle initially, and this just could be lighting tweaks. And again, we're not seeing the final product, but everything looked better in Halo 3 compared to this game. And I realized that- no, was, Oh, I don't know about no, that. No, no, it did No, 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 no. No, it, it did. did. I, no, so, go look. You're, go you're look looking back at Rose Tinted yeah. Glasses, dude. I literally just pulled up trailers of Halo 3 and trailers of Halo <laughs> Infinite side by side and watched them both yesterday. Really? Halo 3 looks better. It's got higher resolution textures. It actually uses bump mapping. And the lighting actually interacts with the models around <laughs> yeah, you're looking at the trailer. Look at and the no, gameplay. This Halo is a gameplay. MCC. Not <laughs> Halo 3 MCC. I'm talking release Halo 3. The really? texture work looks better in that game than it does yeah. in Halo Infinite. I'd have to give it another By look. a pretty wide margin. The, the textures look muddy. They look too stretched out. And again, things will change, right? Because the, the number one post on the gaming subreddits, like when, when that trailer dropped was... That fucking monkey ass looking brute getting getting shoved into various like PS2 and N64 games and looking right at fucking home. Um and I like I don't think it's the worst looking thing ever, but when you're trying to tout the power of X Cloud or, or the power of your new console or why I should buy a Series X, and I look at The Last of Us 2 and this new like this is Microsoft's Last of Us, right? This is one of their big tentpole franchises. This is the reason you buy an Xbox, but apparently not anymore because it's coming to PC. Um, but it's a tentpole AAA franchise, and it can't can't look that bad, can it? So I don't. So here's something else to take note of. Um, you, I don't know how tied in you were to it, so you may not have known this. Halo Two, it it was uh, teased in very similar fashion. It was a huge gameplay trailer. It wasn't like some big cinematic thing. It was gameplay trailer. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, well, I shouldn't see just like this. It's what I anticipate is going to happen here. It was actually all just throwaway. It was just something to show you mm -hmm. mechanics and stuff that's in the game. It was actually yeah. not polished and was not part of the actual game. However, yeah, that's while you were watching, fine. it looked, it looked just like it was probably going to be part of the game. And then you're playing through the game. You realize it was never actually part of the game. I, I just don't think, I don't think they showed their best foot forward here. Now, like the gameplay ideas are interesting and I think it's going to be kind of exciting to see where Halo goes, you know, during and after this, but for a flagship title, man, your game can't look like that. I, I really don't think that's going to be the final product. I really don't. I, I hope not. I hope you're right. I really do. Because I mean, the, the textures are the biggest deal for me. Like the geometry fine it's fine right it's not it's not anything to write home about but we don't we haven't obsessed over polygon since the fucking dreamcast but the texture work the texture work is where the majority of like the pizzazz comes from in modern graphics right i think lighting um, is more than textures even yeah yeah and but, i was yeah, not impressed yeah, with the lighting. The... The, all the guns looked very like matte like a matte screen does it didn't look like it reflected light at all it just kind of looked like it was there and not really lit the same way the other objects in the scene were. Because lighting, as far as the other geometry and stuff in the actual, I don't want to call it a level, but in the open world, looked fine. 
Like even looking at Chief and the enemies, they were lit just fine. But then you look at the gun and it kind of looks weirdly out of place. Now, if the game isn't ready to be shown off in this capacity, don't do it. Like if I, I know they want to they want to show off gameplay because people are pre-ordering PS5s right now. But if the game is going to make your console look worse than it is, just let it bake for a little bit, man. Get that lighting right. Get those textures tuned up and then show off your eight minutes of game. We will live. So uh, something to what Dobby's calling out. It's not that I was trying. I still think that brooded thing looked fine. But what I was saying is, in fact, I just think this is throwaway. I don't think this is the final. Like this, what we just saw will probably not be in the game is what I'm assuming. Regardless of what they say, I anticipate it not being in the game. Yeah, I, I, I'm I agreeing with Dobby here. If you wa- if it's not ready to show, and we all know you, The Elder Scrolls Six wasn't ready to show when they did that. They literally just showed a JPEG with the words Elder Scrolls Six. Cool. <laughs> you just got everybody hyped and you literally did nothing except spend 10 minutes in Photoshop. Do, like, do that with fucking Halo. Like, or show off some screenshots or maybe like tune up one encounter and make that one thing look really good and show us two minutes of gameplay, not so, eight so of That studio. being said, I would rather get Halo something... Fans. I would rather yeah, get something like this than to get the whole this is in-game footage... E3 presentation that looks way yeah. better than the game ever will. <laughs> it's, like, Halo, this is a way better is alternative better, than that, right? Because this is better than Bullshot for sure. Yeah. It is way better than Bullshot. Which, by the way, funny story about Bullshot, which is what that is called. Bullshot oh. is where. I'm like, what are you talking um, about? <laughs> where something looks way better in the advertising than it ever could in real life. Uh, Bullshot has explicitly been made legal by the FTC. Because they assume that consumers are smart enough to understand the difference between clearly marketing slash promotional materials and what could actually happen in a real game. If there's anything I've learned in the being involved in retail for an extended period of time is that consumers are not very smart. No, no, they're not. Not fucking at all. If the FTC wanted to like reevaluate their average consumer uh, thing to just be like, I don't know, some drooling guy trying to chew on a bar of, like Irish spring soap or something. That would be the picture of the average American consumer. <laughs> but something I want to get out on just real quick as to why they may have released the gameplay without it maybe looking the prettiest. Halo fans wanted to know what the fuck was happening. This isn't the Elder Scrolls 6 scenario where we didn't know the game was happening. This game was announced like two years ago. People yeah. wanted to know where it was, what's going on. And this is the best way to show here's what we've then been doing. Pull a fucking Nintendo or, or a naughty dog for, for that matter and say, hey guys, we know you've been waiting. Trust me, we have too. It's not ready yet. And everyone's going to be like, well, that fucking sucks, but all right, I guess I'll for, deal. And that's been the sure. reaction of the majority of like cancellations and delays for games recently. Is people are just like, yeah, we get it that if you delay it and make it better, you're probably going to end up with a better product than you would otherwise. Sucks, I, but we get it. I think people overreact to the fact that, hey, we want to show you the gameplay. We want to show you what the mechanics you're going to be dealing with in this game are. And because they're trying to be transparent with that, people are like, it looks like shit. Don't do yeah. it. <laughs> Rather than, yeah, cool. You're actually showing us how the game's going to play. But they, like Dobby called out, they've got three months, man. They've got enough time we, to do we, like no, their last passes of QA. No, 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 no. That's bullshit. We don't know when. They haven't. They just said winter. It could be fucking December 30th. That's still not a whole lot of time to completely rewrite your lighting graphics engine and retexture all your models. Like, I, I, I am worried. I'm worried for Halo. I'm not. I think that gameplay looked fucking I mean, great. Yeah. I can't wait to get my hands on it. I think game. the gameplay only, looked fine. I only half heartedly watched the trailer, but it looking bad was not something I thought at all during watching the trailer. Same it's here. not the thing that stuck out. The thing I, I noticed the open the world thing. <laughs> that's the only thing I paid attention to is I looked at the texture work and I was like, is this 240p? Like honestly, this kind of looks muddy. And it's the, the old, like, once I noticed it, I couldn't look away. Like, mm. I looked at everything, and I was just looking for muddy textures. And it turns out that, yeah, that's the only thing it's got. Now, does is the, it, does the trailer it, it say, sure. does the trailer have the little, uh, this is pre-release footage and doesn't represent the final quality I'm, of the game disclaimer I mean, even, on it? Even I'm if it curious. doesn't, we already, we already know that it doesn't represent the final oh, quality Oh, yeah, of the game, we know right? for like, sure. But still, like, I don't know. 
I guess I wasn't judging and it that harshly. The uh, other news that came out with it is they've announced it kind of being a lifestyle game where they anticipate Infinite to be a working title for 10 years. Huh. Um, so I like Destiny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Take it with tongue in cheek. But the good thing is, it is coming out at the very beginning of a console gen. Ooh. So that, that part does kind of help it, as well as it's finally making the jump to PC. That's I hope they're right. Being open world, they could they could build that out pretty damn well. But that, I, I agree. That part I take with a grain of salt. I hope it's true, though. It's what they're yeah. saying. They want to do. This is going to be interesting. Like, I'm, I'm looking forward to them responding because the internet did blow up with pictures of the, the 240p monkey brute. They have to respond to that somehow, even if it's just like a tweet that says, Hey man, yeah, the one guy who was supposed to do that model was sick, so he didn't. We had Joey do it, and he's 12 years old. He we has Blender. Know, we don't know the story. Maybe he's from an alternate dimension, and everything there is 240p, and that's his <laughs> yeah, representation see, like, <laughs> in the new world. We don't well, know I mean, the narrative yet. So yeah, after Halo 5, this could be it. what happened to Cortana. I mean, come on. We don't know. He prefers like to anyway. represent himself as 240p. Like, I, I could do it. If there's a narrative excuse for why he's so res low, low resolution, I'm in. Like, uh, like in Paper Mario, why everybody is a, a flat 2D plane, right? There's totally a reason why. That could have been like. a hologram footage. Yeah. That could, I mean, that could be a lot of things. But it could be that, it, like, it actually, it was hologram. Cor Cortana yeah. didn't have, like, her, her RTX stuff turned on. And yeah. so it looked like shit. Yeah. But also, um, from that same press release, Fable has a new title coming. Hey, yeah. Fable. Uh, uh, just I, Fable. It. <laughs> I liked the first I think... Fable. I never did play any of the others, really. I hated Fable. all Fable. Yeah. I enjoyed it, That's but fine. it was the original No Man's Sky. Yes, it was. That's <laughs> why I hate Fable. That is uh, literally the only reason. It is a fine game. But when Peter Molyneux said, we're building the biggest, baddest RPG known to man, it's going to do all these things incredibly well, and this is the only game you're ever going to play for the rest of your life, and what we got was a shitty Zelda clone? Nah, fuck you, guy. I don't see it as a Zelda clone. The first Fable that, was yeah. definitely very, very linear. It, the combat played a lot like Zelda. It was... It wasn't a copy paste, right? I, I mean, I I went through like heavily magic in the first one. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. It was not the game that Peter Molyneux promised me. Turns out no, he's no. nuts. He <laughs> promised Elder Scrolls, pretty much. Yeah, he did. But and that's I mean, I was let was down, fine. but like, I still, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I was disappointed that it wasn't what he said, but the game was still fun. I, I couldn't I couldn't do that like I it's couldn't. It's a good get argument because... for just not paying attention to. <laughs> yeah, I, I, bought, like... I bought the fucking Game Informer with like Fable as the cover story and read that oh, shit okay. for weeks and then bought the game and then was severely disappointed and then swore off Molyneux for the rest of my life, which turns out wasn't the bad idea. You see, you guys make fun of me for being emotionless, but because the way I interact with things, I'm able to go into these scenarios and still enjoy a game. Yeah, it turns out <laughs> that when you are a robot, things matter less. <laughs> because I instantly said, yeah, they lied, whatever. This is still fun. But, okay, and I think there was one more Microsoft announcement that came out. This one was shocking to me. Destiny 2 coming to Game Pass. I don't oh. know why that's shocking. It's already free to play. This includes like, a new DLC. Yeah, but does anybody actually play Destiny? I mean, I tried it. There's a big group of people that have been playing it recently. Yeah, people play Destiny. Like, there's the several thing. people on our Discord that have been we playing don't, it. We don't, definitely. But we don't. I, tried. People I, that play tried. It. I just tried to play it again, and we saw Did how you? that worked. I know Proto Tricks has, Hype has. I have another buddy that I know is, uh, from Nationwide that's been running it. I know there's time-based content that's about to uh, um, transition out for new shit. You, you want to talk about an emotionless robot plot? Let me tell you about Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's playing Destiny for the plot anyway. That's not what the game's for. It has to have a plot just because, you know... You're expected to. You have to have a reason to be doing the things you're doing in-game, but... Not the first game Destiny no, was no. as a huge narrative arc 
Even Destiny was 2 was was lauded as it will answer all of your questions, and then it turns out the story of the game is just, nah, we don't really give a fuck. Can you I kill thought, 27 boars in return I Destiny, here? I thought Destiny 1 was no narrative. Like, very super light narrative, and it wasn't until, like, the Wraith King or whatever it was. They, 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 did, a, they did a lot where it was kind of that, hey, it's a super thin narrative, but we're going to play it off as mysteries that we're going to answer later. And then it turns out that the mystery is it didn't actually matter. Hmm. All right. All right. Oh, you actually called this out. Uh, Destiny is free to play. Well, Rocket League soon to be free to play. Hey. Yeah. Um, if I recall, they said end of summer, it's going to be free to play. Everyone's going to be getting established titles for when they started playing. I think that's so. Cool. I'm, I'm excited for cool. that. A little I'm bit of appreciation for the people who played and bought the game when it was, you know, not free. I like to see that. Yeah, I'm excited, but I'm also worried that I'm going to be hit with 2015. You're only this good, fucking scrub. Oh, you're yeah. going to for sure get that. Like, no doubt about it. All of us are. Well, as we saw earlier in this podcast, if you've been watching the text chat, the Rocket League community is only filled with adults <laughs> who don't yes. hate themselves at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. But no, it's cool. We're also getting some items, uh, like a boost. Which looks to be, it kind of seems like not, it's going to be, uh, yeah, like, like family dollar version, uh, alpha boost, which is mm. fine, you know. Family dollar alpha, I like it. <laughs> but, yeah, it's cool. I'm excited for the items and the stuff. Uh, I'm hoping. Yeah, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm hoping we don't see <laughs> a big surge of. I mean, there's going to be a lot more Smurfs and. Smurfing is well, a huge problem in Rocket League because of just how much you can dominate at the low ranks when you're really high ranked. So this is going to be interesting because other games that I play have tackled, as free-to-play, have tackled Smurfs mm -hmm. by forcing association to cell phones. Ooh. Any account that plays mm -hmm. ranked in Dota has to have a valid cell phone attached to it. Okay. So there's ways. But also what sucks then Anyone who has purchased multiple games for Smurfs or for alts so they can play with friends. It's not always nefarious. Ooh, Sometimes yeah. you just need an account to play with friends with. What happens to them if they have two accounts? I mean, that's kind of what unranked those? is for, though. I mean, even then, if you're two 2400s and you have a friend that just picked up the game, they're not going to enjoy unranked. <laughs> True. So, yeah, I mean... I'm... I'm a I'm little concerned. Like it's it's good. More people are going to be playing Rocket League. But that said, the community is not really lacking in toxicity, and that's the one thing, the one main thing I've seen I've seen free to play bring out in gaming communities is a whole lot more toxicity. Because like unless they're doing that kind of phone number verification, you know, well, fine. I call that guy every racial epitaph under the sun. I'll just make a new account. Um, and one other thing, Tom, you were out, you weren't an active player to say, but you play CSGO. Was yeah. there actually an influx of players when it free to play? I mean, sure there yes. was some, but yes, an ungodly amount. Okay. Uh, and almost all of them were used to test out new cheats and hacks. Okay. It so was a I'm, massive, massive issue when it first went free to play. Okay. It so literally I'm, ruined the game. <laughs> let me reframe that question. How many new actual players were brought in by it? Because mm. um, my theory, my theory with Rocket League is so many people already have it that you will get new players, but I don't think it's going to be a ton. Like I don't, I don't know. think it's going to be this massive know. incoming of fresh meat because everyone and their brother has bought in Rocket League because it's been on sale and it's existed um, for so long and maintained popularity. Sam, so I'm now yeah, looking I don't know. for. I mean, it's not as big of a game as CSGO overall. Correct. So yeah. I'm not sure okay, how it's so, going to go or not. Yeah, the, the average player count was hitting all-time highs and breaking records after it went free-to-play. How yeah. much of it? CS, CSGO, it's one of its best months ever. Um, breaks records oh. for highest player count of all time. So yeah, it looks like CSGO, when it went free-to-play, did break all of its like standard records because okay. of the free-to-play influx. But you also said that that was a lot of bots and shit coming in. Oh my people god, working it was on so cheats. fucking awful. Rocket League doesn't really serve itself well for cheats. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. 
Not like right. the worst, the worst That's thing my, you can do in Rocket League. One of my favorite Rocket things League. about the game. <laughs> yeah, like the worst thing you can do in Rocket League because of the nature of the gameplay. It's like make a trainer that shows the the trajectory of the ball, mm -hmm. but because it moves so fast, like you've got to be in position and read that yeah. shit anyway. Yeah. It's not going to really help you all that much. Yeah, it's, it's not like a shooter where you pull the trigger, the ball goes. You yeah. have to be there to make it go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like maybe maybe something that you can control your angle, but at that point, like. You're just getting better mechanically at the game to control those angles. Yeah. It's like training wheels is effectively what it would be. Yeah. And I don't even know how that would... Oh, sorry, Adam. I'm not even sure how that would work. Poorly. But, <laughs> yeah. I mean, outside of poorly. Good good call. <laughs> but anyway, it's going free to play. Uh, we'll see what happens to the player base. But, um, I'm, I mean, it'll go up. But we'll see how much. I'm mm -hmm. curious about that. Yeah. Hopefully, sure. I'm wrong. I'd love to see a huge influx of players. <clears throat> That would, that would be, cool. be huge for the esports scene potentially. I hope so. Yeah, I was hoping but, the whole epic buyout thing was going to be a net positive. So hopefully this is going to be a step in the right direction. We'll see. Yeah. Well, and with that, uh, let's get to next news. It's a odd one. Uh, the U.S. Army had been streaming on Twitch, and they have since stopped streaming on Twitch because they were having mods delete messages. <laughs> and it was coming out to people saying it was a breach of the first amendment yep so it was a super weird thing so they said you know what <laughs> we're just hilarious. getting the fuck out of this <laughs> so the government cannot I, head like <laughs> do anything or like shut down your speech and in u.s army twitch streams people were asking hey what's your favorite war crime <laughs> and the mods of course being mods said no fuck off and ban the person asking that from the channel cool whatever that's their prerogative but turns out that legally there might be like not confirmed because the like courts haven't ruled on it but there might be first amendment implications to blocking somebody asking an official u.s government twitch stream about war crimes and then literally shutting down their speech which I is kind of hilarious in a really fucked up way. <laughs> I don't think it's a violation of free speech, but at the same time, I can see why they would say, fuck it, we don't even want to try to fight this in court. We're well, just done. Here's here's the other thing, is that they were using it as, you know, recruiting. They're using it as advertising, like they mm -hmm. do with a lot of things. America's Army has, you know, been one of their most prominent uh, reach outs and recruiting using video games. But it turns out that, yeah, you can only actively recruit or advertise to somebody that I think the cutoff is 17. Oh, and because they couldn't age verify. Enforce. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, like if there could be kids and that's expressly forbidden. So what are they going to do? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of questions there. So it's not just the First Amendment stuff. Like, there's a lot of squidgy should we, shouldn't we. Yeah, okay, but this is getting this is getting weird. Twitch. Let's just not. All of those implications, though, actually largely apply to Twitch as whole, too. Like, there's shit that, like, okay, movies, rated R movie. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a bad example. Uh, but for language, rated R movies, like, you have to be of a certain age and all that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. You don't. That is a common misconception. The MPAA movie ratings, game ratings, they are all suggestions. There is literally okay. no law backing them. They oh, are okay, I see you're no law. I see no yeah. law. Okay, yeah, yeah. It is not a legal thing. It's a it's a sort of policy thing. Like Walmart will not sell a ten year old an M rated game, but it's not because it's illegal. It's because Walmart corporate said, "Hey, we probably shouldn't do this." Okay, gotcha, gotcha. gotcha. But okay, the, the First Amendment part, though, that part could still as a whole that, fuck Twitch because of moderation. Yeah. I mean, but either well, way. The, the whole point of the First Amendment is that you can't be, face legal, like you're not going to be prosecuted, prosecuted for something you say. You still have to reap the consequences of the things you say. And if you go into yeah. a community and say <laughs> outlandish things, they can ban you from the community. That's in not Irk, a... it, it wasn't it wasn't the fact that they were banning people to ask First Amendment implications. It's that it was a government sanctioned account banning people. Twitch as a private entity can do whatever the fuck they want. If they say, mm -hmm. Hey, if your chat if your chat player name is purple there, Dobby, we're going to ban you. And Twitch would literally face no First Amendment repercussions from that. But if the U.S. government on a U.S. government sanctioned account starts banning speech, that's where things get weird and interesting. Private corporations don't have to subscribe to the First Amendment because they're private. Government entities do. 
everyone has to subscribe to First Amendment. No, it's they don't. Just what, no, no, they no. Don't. no. So, a platform, okay, it's a weird spot. Twitch is a platform. Platforms absolutely do. No, no, by the don't. nature of... No, we'll, they don't. We'll, 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 they, we'll talk after. I don't want to get into this right here, but yeah. there, there's actual... There's been huge shit going on about Facebook because you might get demarked as a platform. Hmm. And if you get demarked as a platform, shit changes. No, that's that's section... Um, that's a different section. You're talking about internet stuff and being sued over stuff you're... It's, it's safe harbor protection, essentially. That is completely different from First Amendment and has nothing but in common. That's what you get from... I'll, I'll get into it later. But yes, okay, either way. <laughs> we'll go to the next thing. Um... Talk to um, a lawyer about your First Amendment rights. Uh, the Metacritic is trying to counter review bombs. Uh, so, Tom, what are they doing to try to stop launch day bombing? So, users cannot post user reviews on Metacritic or scores until 36 hours after a game is released. Now, if you hate video games because you hate women, it doesn't stop somebody from being a misogynist little shit and review bombing The Last of Us 2 after the 36 hour wait period hopefully it will stop all the the armchair fucking cowboys from going out and just review bombing things for the hell of it because a game dare decide to have a woman as the playable character <laughs> by the way none of that shit happened with horizon zero dawn why didn't anybody like hate that it, no horizon zero dawn Did got hate hated for on that? for did it uh, it got some hate but for um People were claiming um, Native American, um, God dang, can't remember the word now. Wow. Oh, um, cultural appropriation. Appropriation. Or, yeah, yeah. So can we can we just say as an official statement from Seventy Two Pin Connector, if you hate video games because a woman happens to be a main character or in a prominent position within the story, please grow the fuck up. This has been a public service announcement from Seventy Two Pin Connector. Anyway, um, <laughs> other news. <laughs> Last, Last of Us 2 details make heights scarier than its monsters. Uh, this, um, is, this is really cool, and I'm trying not to get spoilery, but if you are up on a tall spot in The Last of Us 2, there's actually code in the game, active, that increases the sound of heartbeat and actually makes the character, like, animate and start to freak out and, like, breathe heavier, and it, it actually works it to um, freak out the player while they're playing it. it also simulates vertigo by changing like the focal or not the focal length um the fov like the fov and stuff that is really uh, fucking when you look cool down, like specifically when you look down they actually low-key demonstrate that early in the game mm -hmm. and it go it coincides with uh not to spoil anything it coincides with a specific person's fear of heights which makes sense. So cool. I, I wanted that's to cool. throw that in the news because that, that's a really fucking cool mechanic. There, like, are a, there are a lot of little details in that game like that are really, but, really cool. But does The Last of Us 2 have shrinking horse balls? That's really what I want to know. Uh, I only play games with active, you know, shrinking and expanding horse testicles. I, I don't think it That did, is my bar for I might have, games. I might not have been watching the horse's testicles closely enough when, when yeah. I was watching people play. I mean, you got it. It's the mark of a good game. But there is a lot of little stuff. Like, if you throw a glass bottle at an enemy and it hits their face, like, they'll have shards of glass on their face. Ooh. Or, I mean, there's some, like, really graphic, like, the gore <laughs> and stuff <laughs> is, the, like... The gore is... Like, if you yeah. shoot somebody's head by a wall, like, there are pieces of brain that you could see on the wall that will, like, slide oh. down and stuff. Like, it's pretty graphic. Neat the sound like if you walk through blood you still have the sound of actually like squishing even when you're not in that bloody area just because your shoes mm -hmm. are wet until they dry off and they make foot rated e oh. for everyone oh another one i saw if you go into water and your character model gets wet and then you open out your journal from the backpack like the stuff in your backpack is wet too okay that's, that's nice pretty touch. rad there's a lot of just little stuff like that. I saw, I watched a video that was just a bunch of different examples of, of little cool details. Just everything as far as like the backpack on the back of your character, kind of like the physics of it makes more sense. It's not just like a solid object. Yeah. Um, like the way the, the ice breaks up when you're riding the horse through the, like the halfway 
frozen uh, water and stuff. Like the way the the surface ice breaks as you walk through it, and the snow and all that. That was fun. I, I actually walked the horse and. Sorry, I, saw, I, I and saw you do that circled. earlier. You didn't say anything about it, but I saw you do it, and he's like, "Oh, that's pretty cool," and I knew what it was. Yeah, I was just observing like how it was interacting with the ice that I knew was breaking. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Oh, that that's kind of cool." But yeah, um, then one last little tidbit. This is a fun one. Worms Armageddon released twenty one years ago. Just got a major patch. Yep. Oh. Is it so su- this is... Huh? Is it just like a support patch for newer operating systems? Uh, yeah, it's a lot of a lot of little changes. A lot of little bug fixes, some, some gameplay tweaks, some balanced stuff. Um, so what's neat is that uh, Team 17, the people behind Worms, um, they aren't releasing these patches. They instead have partnered with a community member who just loved that fucking game and has been releasing patches. So Team 17 said, I mean, yeah, if you want to do the work, we'll like officially sanction these as gameplay patches. We can't open source it because of various contractual obligations and Mm -hmm. weirdness like that. But if you want to keep putting out patches, we'll keep stamping our approval on them. So uh, somebody, somebody released a patch. So yeah, That's if you cool. want to play Worms Armageddon, it has been freshly updated. So uh, so get on that. So does the developer like like bug test it and stuff after the I don't user submits so. a patch, or they're just like, this guy's got a good track record. We're just gonna officially, you know, sanction everything that he does from from this point on, so we don't have to. From what I understand, like this this guy was unofficially keeping the game up for so long that everyone just kind of trusts the dude to do the right thing. That's cool. <laughs> uh, but That's it's really, it's really nice when a, when a game developer just leans into their community and says, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're not going to support a 20-year-old game. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to, yeah, go for it, dog. We, we got your back. So that was, that was neat. And it's cool to see the passion of people who are so still 20 years later still into a specific game like that, enough to actually go through the work of patching it and stuff. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And Worms is a cool little game. I love worms. I played a shit ton of worms back in the day. Well, fellas, um, that's it. I think that was the last news item. Um, Anyone have anything else that we might have missed? Yeah. No. Sounds like a big no. No, 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 nothing comes to mind. I said all the things. That said, uh, let's do a little wrap up here. So if you're watching us live on Twitch, A, thank you. Uh, B, you could always go over to our YouTube at uh, 72 Pin Connector on YouTube and find all of our little clips from our podcast. We cut it up so you don't have to watch all of it if you don't have the time, as well as plays of the month. And we're trying to get some other random stuff up there. We're only going to guarantee the first two, though. Um, if you're over on our YouTube watching our podcast or some of our clips, thank you. Um, but we also do this live every Saturday night, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern time on our Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. So just jump on over there and watch us jump in the game, jump in the conversations. It's a good time as well as we stream randomly through the week. Some too. So just give us a follow and you'll get notified whenever we go. Um, if, uh, also- if you're delivering packages to uh, us at 72 pin connector headquarters right here in Port Knot city, make sure to drink your monster energy drinks. <laughs> please tom um please we have a twitter that we do our uh weekly or daily plays of the day as well as some rocket league team announcements and stuff like that it's uh 72 pc underscore official um yeah and then we have a website 72 pinconnector.com if all that other shit was too much for you just go there and that'll route you everywhere else um that said fellas i i think that's all we got i think that's everything until next week uh, just remember, on, this podcast was all true, except for all the lies. <laughs>